So even that nasty ass swamp water out in the Everglades is alkaline. And so that brings us to our next period in time where interesting stuff starts popping up. There was skeletons, bodies found in South Florida that are called the Florida Bog. The Florida Bog are 8,000 years old. 8,000 years old. Astrology is that number one, astrology is everything. Astrology is the foundation of every world religion. It's the foundation of every culture there's ever been. It's the foundation of every mythology. It's the reason for all of these megalithic sites, where they go, why they're pointed, what direction. You're going you're going to believe in astrology. The main magic, you, you know, you keep bringing it back to the magic. Why does everyone want to come here? Like, yes, there was there was things to take over. Yes, there was things to claim as their own. There was money to be made. But it's the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle tips off the coast of Palm Beach. It's right off the, the southeast coast of Florida. That's the northern tip of the Bermuda Triangle. And the Bermuda Triangle goes down into the Caribbean. And Florida is the, pretty much the closest large inhabited landmass that's right next to it. That's where we get Florida man, the crazy, why there's so much crazy shit in Florida. It's the same reason that the boats go missing and the planes fall out of the air. It's something here is reactive. There's there's a, a dense energy field, whatever it is. And if you're not equipped for that, it leads to mental illness. Welcome to the One on One Podcast with your host, Juan Ayala. Prepare to have your mind blown. Welcome back to another episode of the One on One Podcast. Follow me on social media at the One on One Podcast. All the good shit, you know where to find me. And today we have a special guest. I've always, whenever I do research, I think I go hard in the paint. But there's always another researcher who goes harder in the paint than I do. And they look at things from a different perspective. And I'm always looking for that. So we have Dr. Longo with us today from Old World, Florida. I stumbled across his work the other day and I was blown away. Because, you know, we Florida men, we have to stick together. So we got to do this together. He is a Florida man. What's up, bro? I'm doing good. How are you? doing all right man you want to introduce uh plug in your social media your youtube channel whatever it is i i encourage mm-hmm. people to check that out can you plug that for the yeah. people dr narco longo at old world florida on youtube and old world florida on instagram with uh underscores yeah so it's old underscore world underscore florida and i'll post that in the show notes so, doctor, can you talk to us a little bit about <laughs> a little bit about what's going on in Florida? Because we know Florida. I have a pet gator and you always see the alligator symbolism in these alchemical paintings with uh, mm-hmm. the Nap Hall Tarot has the fool. And there is a gator in that in that in that card. And. We, me, my friends, Gabe, Homie Romy, shout out to the to the crew, the Alchemical All Stars, as I like to call them, and Paranoid American. Uh, we uh, we came to the conclusion that Lefou, I think it's Lefou or Lefou, is F L, which is the Florida man. I'm trying to look for the card here now, but we have the O G Florida man and Manly P, Daddy Manly P Hall, Senpai Hall. He knew this. He knew that the Florida man is the is the alchemical answer, I guess. I don't know how else to put it. And you really shed some light on some Florida stuff that I was not aware of. And yeah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about what got you into this and maybe uh, the project you have going on, if you want to plug that as well? Sure. Um, I've lived in Florida my whole life. And probably when I was about 
15 or 16 in in one year i i got toad poisoned in both my <laughs> in both my eyes by one of these bufo toads i was like 14 15 years old <laughs> what what in florida so yep in florida i was i was kicking toads and one one got me in the eye <laughs> and that had, you know you know what they use bufo toad for right is it's that a, the DMT one? Mm-hmm. In yeah. Florida. Yeah. In the wild. So that. Yep. They're everywhere. They're everywhere in Florida. No fucking buf- way, buf- bro. Bufo toads. I'm going to Google this. Hold on. Go ahead. Keep talking. But so that happened in one year. And then later that year, I was out with some friends and I saw a UFO and we were blown away. I ran back home. And I, the, my friend's dad that I was staying with, that we were sleeping over at, it was a sleepover, we were in middle school, saw a UFO come running back home. The dad was a conspiracy theorist. The dad uh, had worked in the ma- on the Matrix movie. He'd been, worked in all this stuff. And he had everything ready, ready for me. As soon as we came home with that holy shit, we saw a UFO. He was like, here you go. And he handed handed me pretty much the the whole spiel on 9-11, the whole spiel on everything. So I got that when I was about 15, 14, 15 years old. And I learned all that stuff, started getting more into it when I was about 18. And I'm 25 now, so just stayed with it. And being in Florida, uh, just everything – Lots of things started coming back to Florida, whether it's the secret societies, whether it's the Bermuda Triangle, whether it's the the spring water. Coral Castle. Yeah, because that's part of, you know, I started getting healthier as you wake up. You want to start. I see you. You're drinking spring water. I've got my distilled water right here. Well, part of that is, you know, you want to find the best water. That's how they get to us the hardest through the water. And... Florida luckily has these natural aquifers underneath. So we have both the aquifers underneath and then we have the freshwater springs that they supply that go pretty much all throughout the the center of the state, the inland, inland of Florida. And I just, you know, it was, there was no sudden thing. I just got into all this stuff and, and here we are. But I'm a, I'm a musician. That's a little bit more about me. I play music. That's pretty much all else I do. I work at a bookstore here. I'll show everyone. You can tell the I'm going to be paying a visit there soon. You guys are opening up very soon here in a couple of days. Yeah, metaphysical bookstore uh, yeah. down in Palm, Palm Beach County, Lake Worth. Yeah, Lake Worth. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be checking that out very soon. And so, what did the toad? So you got. An eye infection from the toad, and there is no bufo- I, not an infection, but it it almost knocked me out. It was like a, I thought I was going to die, and I probably wasn't equipped or had the vocabulary back then to realize it for what it was. That it was a a psychedelic experience, probably. But um, I got a full dose in both eyes, both eyeballs, and they can kill like a hundred pound dogs. What? So I thought I was going to. I thought I was done for. I was washing my eyes out, and but I, th- I, th- I think that that had to have spurred along my awakening. There's, there's no doubt about it. Is it is it a synchronicity that yesterday I was doing a episode in VR as Morpheus, and then you brought up that the guy works that he worked on the Matrix movies? Mm-hmm. Kind of odd, isn't it? I was literally Morpheus in VR chat. I was doing, I, holy shit, dude. I was doing an episode with a toad, with a frog. I pro, I swear really? to God, bro, I'm not even lying right now. His name is Tarot Reader Frog, and he oh, he is a founder of a virtual mystery school. I swear. Oh, really? Yeah, bro, I'm not even lying. I swear to God. And that's weird that you brought up the toad and then how that's kicked off your, your UFO experience and then obviously the mm-hmm. Matrix I was literally Morpheus. That's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks too. And so, 
Yeah, I've I 100% agree, dude. I was inspired. There there are a couple people in the community such as Michael Wan and especially Homie Romy, one of my buddies from Rising from the Ashes podcast. He came to Florida. Unfortunately, I was in South Florida. We couldn't connect because he came to Kissimmee. And Kissimmee's right near me, Central Florida. And he was here and he went up to St. Augustine, right? St. Augustine being one of the oldest cities in the states. And he was mm-hmm. blown away. Right? This is a guy from California. We know how they are in California, right? It's probably a shithole. I don't know why anybody <laughs> would want to live there, but that's besides yeah. the point. He went to to Florida, went to St. Augustine. He was seeing all this architecture, right? All this weird architecture. He's into Tartaria. He's into all that good stuff. And he hits me up and he goes, dude, we need to do a deep dive on Florida. We need to uncover stuff about florida because it's always in your own backyard that you have the most interesting stuff but you pay no attention to it because you're so used to it me being Uh a fisherman here in florida i am in the everglades very often and it's a it's a very weird nature is psychedelic right i was on a podcast the other day talking about how i went fishing the other day and i just stopped for a second and i took the nature in right i turned off my music i turned everything off just sat in the boat and just took in nature it was fucking beautiful you know what i mean it was relaxing and it was just beautiful and i don't think people do that enough especially with them wanting to get us off the streets and isolated and doing all this thank god that our governor didn't have us do any of that bullshit it's all bullshit mm-hmm. you know what i mean you have people still to this day driving around with fucking masks on in their cars <laughs> by themselves yeah it's like what are you doing know. you know so oh the what about when they what about when they have one on and then or they have none and then both their kids have one on <laughs> yeah exactly it's, it's fucking ridiculous so homie Romy hits me up and goes and he tells me hey dude we got to start digging into florida something that i never really thought about doing I, i've done an episode to coral on uh, coral castle i've been to coral castle i've talked about it before i've talked about how psychedelic the everglades are and how how these open areas hold a certain energy about them like they say that the jinn live in the desert well i think it's the same thing with the everglades these open places there's a reason why disney built disney on not just swamp that was swamp but he built there for uh, 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 a specific reason uh, some energetic reason that that place is there so mm-hmm. i started looking into all the henry's and we started this impromptu series called esoteric florida exposing esoteric florida i guess or the occult origins of florida and it ties into rockefeller we know how shady the rockefellers are we know how shady the carnegies are we know how shady all the henry's there's like five different henry's that help found florida we have geronimo tied to florida as well we have uh, uh the osceola tribe leader right and the seminal tribe leader i believe it was i forget his name is it the osceola or someone I always get well, the Os- Osceola is the, was the most famous. The one that got his head cut off, right? According to the legend. Yeah, that that's a legend after his death that he uh I think he died of starvation or like an illness mm-hmm. captivity. And yeah. he was he was he was actually imprisoned in mm-hmm. a star fort. They it's took St. Augustine, huh? The sem- I think it might have been that one. I don't remember sure. But um, they probably the Seminoles did get interned in the uh, Castillo de San Martin in Saint Augustine. Yeah, some of them even went down to Fort Jefferson, and were either used for slaves or mm. were being held held there later on. Yeah, all all of that plays a role when you start looking into the beliefs of all these tribes. You have the Timucua, you have all these places, and then what really the reason I wasn't able to find your videos is because you literally had posted them as I was finishing up my research, right? Some of the research, cause it's an ongoing thing. We've already done two episodes on it mm-hmm. as I was already wrapping up and moving away from that research into other, other realms of things. And you popped up on my feet. And I was like, Holy shit. This dude's talking about fucking pyramids in Florida. Mm-hmm. And that's what really made my esoteric nipples hard. That's what really drew me in. So we have the yeah. trees in Florida, the giant trees, which I had no idea about, bro. I had no idea about that, about these no, giant trees. Does. I had no clue. And I remember That's the redwoods. Yeah, I remember I was on Lake Toho here in, in Kissimmee, 
and there's an island on that on that lake. And on that island, there's this huge tree. And now talking about it, I'm gonna probably go out. This is only accessible by boat. I'm gonna go back and take a picture of this tree. Because I remember I went there, it's like a campground. I went there one day and I remember saying, Damn, that tree is fucking huge. Like it's so big and thick and all this stuff. And I'm gonna go back and like watching your video on the trees made me want to go back and take a picture of it because it's it's a really beautiful tree. So we have pyramids in Florida. We have the Moors in Florida. We got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, bro. I know you had some stuff that you wanted to share with us. And where do you want to get started? Because there's so much to talk about. Um, I guess we can go chronologically. That would probably be easiest. Um, that we're told people have only been in Florida for 14,000 years. And those people would have looked most similar to the people we see in the Yucatan, Mexico, parts of Mexico, Guatemala. That's what these people would have looked like, right? The original Floridians. Um, there's zero trace of those people. Zero. They were completely killed off when the Spanish got here. Decimated. Now, completely uh, supposedly a few may have made it to cuba that's what they say but the spanish were in cuba waiting waiting for them there too so um so there's no remnant of that original society the the Tumukwa, the calusa the Tequesta. there's pretty much no remnants of their culture despite how much how the water in florida is actually the best in the world for preservation. So, I saw it with the mammoths, dude. That was fucking crazy. So, so the spring water pre preserves things too, but the swamp water is even more preserving because there's there's no oxygen in Florida's water. There's zero oxygen, or very very low. Sorry, very 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 low, and it's alkaline. So even that nasty ass swamp water out in the Everglades is alkaline, and when a bone goes down there, when a body goes down there, they've, they found, so that brings us to our next, next, you know, period in time where interesting stuff starts popping up about 8,000 years ago. There was, or today recently, there was skeletons, bodies found in South Florida that are called the Florida bog people. Now the Florida bog people are 8,000 years old, 8,000 years old. That's like accurately dated. I mean, who's to say that, but it's unanimously dated at 8,000 years old. And that well predates, you know, a lot of these uh, civilizations that the Spanish bumped into when they got there. And these people were actually had a haplo group from Eurasia and they were six feet tall or or taller and were likely european like like vikings pretty much and that's in south florida 8000 years ago after the last ice age this is fucking crazy i never heard about this i'm going to share my screen real quick cuz i've yeah. pulled up this thing i don't know if this is correct again i can't i can't Confirm this at the moment, but Florida's Wendover bog bodies predate the Egyptian pyramids and can rewrite rewrite ancient American history. Yes. So they, they did. Wow. So that's that's the first uh, red flag, pretty much. That even before the Spanish, the Moors, the that whole fiasco, there was already this international, you know, transcontinental people that came that were definitely from Eurasia. I've never heard, and I've I, lived in Florida my entire life and I've never, and I'm, and I'm from Puerto Rico, by the way, I'm Puerto Rican, nice. right? So Kissimmee cool. is little Puerto Rico. I was born in yeah. Puerto Rico and I moved here when I was seven or eight and I've lived here most of my life and I, ne I didn't even have any idea about this because they don't teach us this in school is the problem they don't teach mm -hmm. us about this in school they don't because 
we know that the Rockefellers and all these powerful families, it's not conspiracy. We know that they have their hands in all these cookie jars when it comes to the educational system, when it comes to the monetary system, when it comes to almost all the petroleum system, the pharmaceutical system. We know that they're in all of these industries. This is history. This is not any made up conspiracy bullshit. Cause as soon as you tell somebody, Oh, I talk about conspiracies. They want to jump off the ship and Oh yeah, I want I don't want to touch you with a 10 foot pole, but I love it when I can back things up with history and show them things like this that I had no idea about until people like you bring it up again. That's why I said that some other researchers go harder in the paint than your boy. And, but that's what we're here for, right? We're here to have conversations and learn new things. So I'm being schooled right now on some esoteric Florida stuff. So those are the bog people. You can go on YouTube. You can look up some of the researchers that were involved with, with bringing them up. And they're literally saying there's a cover up. These people are, we found them. Okay. Here's another thing. I, you know, I, I talk sideways sometime. I was supposed to say when they found the bodies, they were so preserved. They called the police because they thought it was a murder. <laughs> they, they were full bodies, like almost, you know, 90% preserved, whatever. And they called the police and said, we just found, you know, a crime fresh scene. bodies, fresh bodies, like a murder. But they found them later. They were all curled up in, in the fetal position, tied in these like baskets, like a basket, casket, basket. There's some etymology. Is it an underwater? It's an underwater burial, is what they called it. And Mm -hmm. here I got a picture of that casket that you're talking about. Was would have been a little, a little something like this. Mm -hmm. For those listening at home on the RSS feeds, I do post the video versions on YouTube, the One on One Podcast YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, comment, all that good shit. So we have this here. They find those people. It predates the Egyptians. So obviously they're lying right off the bat saying that. So these people, are you getting at the the whole thing where they came from South America? Uh, those are t- those are Atlanteans. If I'm if I'm coming out on my own opinion, those are Atlanteans. Those are Ad- Atlanteans. Those are the last ice age was about thirteen thousand years years ago. That's when. It, Atlantis sunk the mud, you know, the cataclysm, it was frozen in some parts. It was flooded in others. People argue all day about that stuff. It doesn't really matter. Something happened. Our system got hit hard. All the continents shifted a little bit. The sea levels shifted. And that's why we see those people from that Eurasian, that Eurasian DNA across the Atlantic, either their homeland sank or Florida was the, the far extent of this previous Atlantic empire. That was largely European. European looking. That's crazy, dude. Mm-hmm. So after these bog people, what comes next? I know we have the mammoth so, uh, being preserved as well, like intact right. with skin and everything. I didn't even know that. And mm-hmm. you also it's, talk about the elephants of Florida too. Right. So... Before we get to that, before I forget, do you know about the Miami Circle? No. Look up the Miami Circle. So this is probably next chronologically in the the history of Florida. Um, The Miami Circle is in downtown Miami. It's this circle. (laughs) I just got a text. What the fuck, dude? I didn't even know that. Miami Circle. So, so right off the bat, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. It's all these uh, post molds. Those are called post molds. They're they're holes drilled down into solid bedrock, and we're told those holes are to put a a, a post down into to hold a, a structure up. You know. Now, I want you to look at you know look at a few, at a few pictures of that around the dig site now you see this the the uh cement lock in there 
this thing right here this this these look at yeah, this there's a cement block surrounded with brick it's a it's a septic tank the septic tank is uh, is a mystery in itself they don't know when the septic tank was put in but the septic tank lines up perfectly with the rim of the circle and the septic tank is dated to you know late 1800s so that circle i think it says what, what 2000 years old I've never heard about this in my entire life, bro. So, yeah, so are believed to be 1,800 to 2,000 years old, including artifacts, pieces of burnt wood after being tested for radiocarbon dating. Right. To date, the Miami Circle is the only known evidence in the United States of a prehistoric structure built into bedrock. Wow. That's so it's crazy. Drilled, it's, it's drilled directly into the bedrock. And um, that, to me, now, okay. Okay, you ready to have your socks knocked off? I want you to search Miami Circle Astrology or Miami Circle Stars. So you know how sites sites around the world are you know lined up to the stars, lined up to the ley lines. They they look at the solstice, they look at the equinox. So are you seeing anything? No. Do you have a certain website that you go to for that? Here, let me find it. Because literally, I've never heard about this, bro. This is crazy. And we know... Dude, so I had a reading done by a friend of mine. Shout out to Kaylee Burkana. She did a reading of mine. She's a, she does astrology. And okay. she didn't know who, who I was or anything at the time. Right? I just met her on a show. And I don't believe in astrology. But I believe in magic. Oh, my God. I believe oh. in magic. So she... She literally, oh the stuff that she was reading about me, bro, was 100%. She didn't know me. This is before we started to get to know each other. She did a reading, and some of the stuff that she was talking about was, like, too crazy spot on. I was like, all right, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll say that, right, that I don't believe in astrology, but you have to look at talismanic magic. You have to look at all these different forms of magic that rely. Look, Agrippa. I mean, <laughs> Agrippa's whole work is on the alignment of the stars, at a certain time of day, year, etc., that plays a huge role into the technology that has been lost here. That's the thing. I think it, it is some sort of technology that has been lost to time. You know what I mean? Because it was all oral. So, astrology is that number one. Astrology is everything. Astrology is the foundation of every world religion. It's the foundation of every culture there's ever been the foundation of every mythology it's the reason for all of these megalithic sites where they go why they're pointed what direction so i you're going you're going to believe in astrology by the time this is over i can assure <laughs> you that so i think it's easiest but we'll get back to, we'll get back to that bro before Miami you start dating stuff. somebody do you ask them for their birth date like birth time and all that stuff do you do that so <laughs> Okay, so when you say astrology, we can go we can go right into that too. Astrology, when you say, "Oh, I'm a Taurus," I'm a, you're a Taurus, I'm a Sagittarius. Well, people's number one issue with astrology is they'll say, "I'm a Taurus," my friends are Taurus, we're nothing alike. De debunked, right? Debunked. Mm -hmm. It's that's like saying, uh, doesn't matter. That is so ignorant. It's like you know, trying to fly with tennis rackets. It's, it's not going to work. You know, you're not approaching it the right way. It's a science. So you might say you're a Taurus, my friend's a Taurus. That's where the sun was. Where was the moon? Where was Venus? Where was Saturn? So the sun is just one part. It's the biggest, it's the biggest part. You're a Taurus, you're a Taurus without a doubt. Um, are it's you everything. and I compatible as far as friends, bro? Can we be friends? I mean, yeah, we can be friends. Friends friends doesn't matter. You can be with anybody. It's it's like romance that it matters when it comes to... to it's not work. like that. Okay, so here, there's 12 zodiac signs. There's 12 months of the year. Our calendar is a direct copy of the zodiac. Direct. Uh, 12, 30, 30 day months, 30 degrees of the zodiac. There's 360 degrees of the zodiac around the horizon around us. Um, you should put this in at the end of the video. We, we should, 
talk about the Miami <laughs> Circle. All but, right, continue. Hold on, so so because it's a lot, bro. It's a lot. Let me. Yeah. Just yeah. keep going. Go right. talk about the Miami Circle. We're going to tell astrology later. Okay. Um, Miami Circle. I can share my screen. I've never done it before, but if you search into Google Miami Circle stars, you will see exactly what I'm what I'm talking about. Uh, let me see. Your ha- you'll see just how much astrology mattered to these people. And this is the Tequesta people, according to the mainstream narrative. Any of these pictures? Is that what you're talking about? Okay, top right, top right, top right. Yeah. This this one. If you, yeah, top right one. Yep, there you go. So that is an overlay of the zodiac onto these holes in the ground, and they line up perfectly 100 percent. so this was this was not a this was not a they say they want to say that this was like a big um tp they say this is a big tp it's not a tp it's a star map it's and if you if you look at the recommended i'm looking at a bunch of different ones i'm, I'm using google i don't know what you're using duck uh, duck go bro sorry. the lizards run google and they probably run duck duck go too but fuck them yeah so you that's the septic tank that I was talking about earlier. This piece right here? Bottom. Right. So that is, you know, maybe 120, 200 years old max, um, which lines up pretty well with the, when I say Tartarian, we should probably get into the definitions too. Tartarian for me is everything that came after Atlantis, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Everything... It's the last, last remnants. I'm not saying it's the Russian Tartars. I'm not saying it's... It's like a it's revival a mis- almost, right? It's like what, what it's was... A, it's, a mi- it's a misnomer. Tartaria is a misnomer, but it's it's one that I embrace. Just, you know, it's it's almost a slanderous term. That's what the Romans called the people east of them were Tartars. Oh. The people west of them were barbers. Is that where retarded comes from, bro? It is. It is. Uh, well... <laughs> retarded yeah it means you're thick it means you're dense like stone Tart- tartar means stone tartar means thick. rock sediment stuff like that oh so, yeah. it would make sense because they built all you got these rocks you got rocks in your head yeah dude <laughs> but uh what were we talking about so we have here this astrological map right where if one of the one of my favorite things and correct me if i'm wrong here on the chronology of this but we know that the mayans were very big into astrology about astrological alignments and the tequesta people when i looked into them as well for some research in florida they their their mounds their forts whatever you want to call them were astrologically aligned with the stars and i saw one of your videos coincidentally they're aligned with the mayan astrological things correct me if i'm wrong where it is where the 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 idea being that the mayans the miami came to florida Mm -hmm. absolutely i mean okay so the maya or you know you see mexico it's like the banana coming down around almost like a leg right and then you see the yucatan the yucatan peninsula points up into the caribbean right Florida is coming down and the Yucatan is coming up. The Maya were right at the tip of the Yucatan. The only thing standing between them and Florida was Cuba, pretty much. So it's it's no coincidence that we have the Maya right here in the Yucatan. And they were confined to the Yucatan, which is so odd. You had um, the Aztec throughout the rest of Mexico, but you had the the Maya stayed right there in the Yucatan. It was almost like a sea, like a seaport, like a colony. It was like a center of trade, and which that would have, play into the whole Phoenician thing, right? That they were sea yes, people. They were yes. The, the Phoenicians were undoubtedly came to the Maya, came to South Florida, came to the Caribbean, came to America. A lot of the Spanish gold that was getting hauled out. Um, they, there is gold in the ground over there. There's lots of gold, but um, it was Phoenician gold. It was, it was Phoenician gold. It was Phoenician treasures. The Phoenicians had the blue eyes. 
So anywhere, anywhere you see these blue-eyed statues of visitors, demi, sometimes they're called demigods. That's, that's just, they show up with a boat, you know, they look nothing like you. Um, but the Phoenicians had the blue eyes. So when they cross over to the Moors, we see a mixture of two races because they, they were different races, but they shared a culture. And that pretty much comes from North Africa. So that's going to be the second um, wave of Phoenician descended people in Florida would, would probably be around when Columbus came. He was chasing the Moors, undoubtedly. There's no doubt. St. Germain, not Columbus. It was St. Germain. Uh, uh, cause Christopher Columbus was St. Germain. Oh, right. right, right. <laughs> well, do you, do you know, you know, Christopher Columbus's name? Do you know his real name? No. Cristobal, Cristo, Ball, Cristobal, it's a, whatever, Portuguese, Spanish, mm-hmm. Italian. They, we don't know what he was. And you know they, what he was writing about, right? Like in what, when he got here or before? He was writing about prophecies and the apocalypse. And the reason right. that he came to America, uh, this is so according here. to mainstream, but they don't teach us this in school, uh, but according to the mainstream narrative, he was coming to the, the U.S., right, whatever it was, or India, wherever he thought he was going, because they needed to spread Christianity. They needed to spread mm-hmm. and and populate. And, and the reason that Juan Ponce de Leon came to Florida was because, again, according to the mainstream history, was that he had a dispute with Christopher Columbus's son over the mm-hmm. being governor of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, yeah. So right. we have this connection. Right. But did you know... That John D. met with Christopher Columbus in person, according to the records, in person. Yes, they met. Ninety-two. Hmm. Because he was that. he was with uh, Mercator and all these other guys. He was friends with him, and and uh, mm-hmm. John D. is also tied to Black Rock too. This magnetic, I like rock in the North Pole. It's thirty-three miles wide. <laughs> I, I like. I like John D. John D was a good guy. Yeah, I, John D. John D was a good guy. Which one, Rockefeller or the Elizabeth? No, 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 no. John D. the original. The OG. Original. This makes me sad, bro. Check this out. So we have here Miami Circle sacred sites, but then look at all the shit around. Yes, they they built this disgusting park on top of it. Look at this. But yeah. No, it's a cover-up for sure. They put the nastiest, you know, most artificial-looking park on top of it. People think it's just a little circle. They just bring their dogs to shit all over it, probably. Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty uh, good. So here, back to Columbus. One more thing. The Phoenicians. Here's another another giveaway, dead giveaway. The Phoenician or just Phoenician-descended people were in America before the Catholics. So... Do you know where Galloway is? Galloway is in the south of Ireland. It's Gal. It's there were these twelve tribes from Galloway, twelve tribes of Galloway, right in in Ireland. Uh, sometimes they say there's fourteen, but two of them were extra, or two of them were like the nobility. I forget, but there's twelve tri- tribes of Galloway, and Finnegan. The word Finnegan, the the, the family Finnegan comes from Galway, Ireland, Finnegan. So Finnegan is the Irish name for Phoenician. It's Finnegan, Phoenician. And the Phoenicians were the Vikings. They were Finnish, the Finnish people. So, and, and etymology is everything. It's everything. Uh, phonetics. So another way that you can see the, the Phoenicians have been obscured from history is Take the English language. Where does the English language come from? The English language is the oldest language on the planet, bar none. Now, how how do we know this? Well, you can trace Phoenician, you can trace English two ways. You can trace it one to the runes, to the Germanic runes, English to Frisian to German to Old Norse, and then we have the runes. That's the runic alphabet. So you might want to pull up the runic alphabet if you, you can show people. The runic alphabet is what the Vikings used up north. 
Phoenician is the first alphabet. Phoenician. Now, I think the runes were older, but that doesn't matter. The Phoenician uh, alphabet is the oldest alphabet on the planet. Predates Hebrew, predates the old Greek, the Amraic. Um, now, so if you look at the runic, then go look at the Phoenician. And they're not the same symbols, but it's the exact same writing system. So English, we can trace it back to the runic alphabet because it's a Germanic language. But then it could, we can also trace it back to Phoenician. Why? Because it comes from Roman. They tell us English comes from Roman, the Latin. Back past Latin, you go to the Greek. Back past the Greek, you go to the Hebrew. And back past the Hebrew, you get to Phoenician. So English is the connector point. English is the business language of the planet. It has always been, and it always will be. English is the modern Phoenician. So that's why. Correct me if I'm wrong, because you're saying some stuff that I never really thought about. But wouldn't that make us like the. Is it what comes after the successor or the predecessor? Which one's the, the successor, right? After? After successor, yeah. So the wouldn't that make us the remnants of the Tartarians? What well, is, we're the rem European culture is the direct um, refugees of Atlantis. The American and the dark-skinned people of the planet from Lemuria, mm -hmm. which is where is the Pacific version of Atlantis. It's the sunken Pacific island that disappeared. No one knows. That's where black and Asian people come from. The Blasians. Um, to, to use, you know, not, not group everyone in together, but for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. that's where the, the darker people come from. And they went across the Pacific to Africa, and then they went across to you know, through the Pacific Islands and to the west coast of America, which is the Americas. So those are the Lemurians. And the Lemurians is where we get the word more. Mm. Lemurian. It's also where we get the word Amorica. Amorica. It's not Amerigo Vespucci. It's Amorica, which means... I mean, land of the serpents or some shit like that? It means the, plu the plumed serpent. Right, cuts the caudal. <laughs> it's 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 uh jupiter it's jupiter it's jupiter it's the planet planet jupiter astrology is the key to everything if you know astrology you'll never get lost you'll so never get what happened confused. with used with the the with the hidden let's not get into astrology right now we'll get into that at the okay. end because i have some questions for you so sure. i've always questioned the mainstream narrative when it comes to you have right Mesopotamia, the Fertile Crescent was the kickstart of civilization. That was the those were the OGs. Those were the main people. But according to this, it wasn't actually them. It was somebody else. Because I've always said, I go, that's obviously has an agenda. Now you can get really racist with that if you want to, because it, it plays into the all these other races, black people, Jews, whatever, Indians. Who, who cares? I think we're. Somebody asked me today, yeah. "Where are you from?" I said, "From planet Earth." It doesn't matter where I'm from. I don't identify from from Puerto Rico. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't. I don't believe in that. But I've heard it. The take that I've heard on it was that they've hijacked history, and by they, the obscure occulted groups, perhaps families of since the beginning of time and they've molded it into their own narrative in order to push their own agenda on planet earth history itself mm -hmm. and they've obscured all this other stuff now when you start talking what really turned it off for me with the tartarian stuff was i have i forgot the name of the youtube channel but it was this guy right that supposedly debunked tartaria and it kind of turned me off to the idea because it, it, he showed these crazy, this crazy architecture that had been upkept, obviously, right? So it looks clean. It looks new because they've upkept it. And then what really turned me off was the marble inside of this building was actually foam and it was painted on to look like marble. It wasn't actually marble. 
Mm-hmm. So it was a facade of, oh, this is this grandeur architecture, beautiful, golden. It was just wood and, and foam yeah. that they had just I mean, shaped. That's, that's what they say about a lot of stuff. And facading has a lot to do with masons, masonry. Brick buildings, stone, limestone buildings, a lot of the time only the first layer, kind of like you're saying, is actually that hard brick. It's a facade. It's it's a false exterior. And the rest of the building might might be wood. But in Florida, we see I mean there's no facading the pyramids, there's no facading Machu actually Machu Picchu, they they actually ripped down I don't know if this was fake. Peru's not my not my specialty. They ripped down one of these walls and there was brick behind one of these megalithic what? stones. It was that was a facade. That was a um that was a uh, like a veneer, you know, mm-hmm. it was like a cement, you know. Well, Machu Picchu was the Incas, across. right? That was Machu Picchu, it was the Inca people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with the llama. You know that they worship the llama, right? The alpaca was was sacred yeah. to them. The alpaca was yeah. a gift from Mother Earth, so they from the the mother goddess and of Earth, and they worship them. The alpacas. That's why you see so many of them up there. Mm-hmm. And it was a sacred it's, it's, animal. It's the goat. That's that's the South American equivalent to the mountain goat, to oh. the, the the bach, the billy goat. Now the goat. Um. The goat, you see, that'll tell you about different cultures. Okay, so South American people and uh, are ruled by the planet Saturn. Saturn is the god, and it, we're, we're just going to get into we're going to get into astrology. It's unavoidable. Don't worry. Um, the planet Saturn is the death cult, skeleton, skull and bones, uh, god. He's he's the god of sacrifice. Oh, we know, we know Saturn around here, bro. Trust me. He's he's the <laughs> he's the goat. He's the Baphomet. He's the all the goat stuff is is Saturn. Now that's we're not saying we're not saying that South Americans are evil, but that was their um, supreme god. So that's why you see Halloween comes from South America, the celebration of the dead. They were most god Saturn rules time and death. What do we find in South America? Death cults, human sacrifice, and the most accurate timekeeping system on the planet. What else do we see? We see uh, re- reptiles, alligators. Alligator is Saturn. The alligator is Saturn. He's the planet. In Egyptian, you see the the, uh, the god with the alligator head. He's, he's uh, the Egyptian version of Saturn. Check this out, bro. We, we know a little bit about Saturn around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> this is my comic book. Oh yeah. Chosen Juan versus the Saturnian cube. So nice. Well the cube so the cube is actually um Venus. Really? The, believe it or not, everyone says the black cube is Saturn. So the black cube is where? In the Middle East. The Middle East is ruled by Venus. Mm-hmm. Was by Venus. They they're supposed to be ruled by Venus. When when a culture follows this this natural inclination, this natural connection to one of the planets, they flourish and do their best. The the Catholics came and erased all this because they're they're bent on the one God. You know, you have to feel guilty all the time about living. And they came and they got rid of all these old world systems. But let's let's go back to Florida for a second. So Florida is is ruled by Pisces, the sign Pisces. And this is going to blow your mind, too. Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac, right? Florida was the last state to join the Union, if I'm not mistaken. Um, You're right. We have, Pisces is, has three planets that rule it. You don't have to know what this means, but three planets rule Pisces. Number one, Jupiter. Number two, Neptune. Number three, Venus. In Florida, we have Venus, Florida, we have Jupiter, Florida, and we have Neptune Beach. <laughs> so not only that, if you look, if you go look Florida, Pisces map, star map, all of the sites I saw in your video, you were talking about how all these, 
all the sites are laid over certain points. The entire yeah. peninsula of Florida is is orientated to the sign Pisces in the sky. So they knew this. They knew this back then. The modern astrology, modern astrologers know it today. So that's where you can find your, you know, astrology is the key to everything. And Pisces is the fish. Yeah, the two comes to fish, the two fishes. Yeah, and you got fishing and also correct me if I'm wrong. I have a buddy of mine who does. He has a Mario Garza symbolic studies. I don't know if you've seen him on TikTok or not. He does like he studies symbolism and he's told me before because we're going to be doing a show here soon together that some of these some of the symbols are gates now gates to what i don't know but they are portals is pisces one of them because i'm not 100 percent familiar i mean i don't know what what context you're referring to he says exactly. that you enter through one and go out the uh, and come out the other side. okay so so pisces if if you're going with that sort of like reincarnation is that kind of what you're talking about or like coming coming to earth as a soul whatever so aries is the first sign of the zodiac aries pisces is the last sign of the zodiac so it, it's the grandfather of the zodiac it's the oldest is the the elder the wise the wisest the most religious the most pure pisces is jesus we just left the age of pisces which was mm-hmm. okay if you want to know your timelines you know An- anatoly flamenco is good that stuff's good it's not discredited he actually used eclipses and stuff to track down the timeline. That's astral theology, right? Well, astro theology is the religions. The religions being every religion is the plant is is astrology. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus is the age of Pisces. That's why you see the Christians go by with their little their little fish on the back of their car. <laughs> you ask them what is the what does the fish mean, and they have they have no idea. They couldn't tell you. You know who also guessed correctly how many fish were in a fisherman's net? Jesus. Pythagoras. Pythagoras. And Pythagoras' right. origin story is very similar to Jesus. Right. Well, it's a myth. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a myth. There was no historical Jesus. Jesus is the planet Jupiter. He's Zeus. This is a Christian Jupiter. podcast, bro. Keep those heretical thoughts to yourself, please. Well, this is Christianity. <laughs> Christianity needs to catch up. Uh, you know, they don't realize it. It's pagan. Pagan's not evil. Mm-hmm. Astrology's not evil. It's not from the devil. That's ridiculous. That Who's from the devil? The Catholics are from the devil. The Pope is from the devil. The Pope is, you know, these are the people that taught us astrology's fake. Okay, go look back to anyone in the ancient world. They consulted the gods not random gods, but the, the planets in the skies. So, so Pisces is Jupiter. The last 2,000 years um, were ruled by Pisces. So the age of Aquarius, what I was saying is if you want to know your timelines, if you want to know where all the cultures were, uh, the last 2,000 years were the age of Pisces, from the year zero to the year 2,000. And what happened in those in, in that time period? We had Christianity, we had Islam, we had Buddhism pop up. Buddhism was a little bit before that, but it took took spread during that time. It's religion because Pisces rules organized religion, so that's where the religion comes from. Once we hit the year two thousand, religion goes right out the window. No one will know religion. It's it's a it's it's made up. It's for uh, stupid people. And what do we have now? We have the age of Aquarius. Everyone's gay. Everyone's trans. Digital technology. Aquarius rules digital technology. So an astrologer six thousand years ago could have told you what technology today would have looked like. Now this also holds a key to Tartaria. The last two thousand years were ruled by Pisces, which is water. So we know their prime method of energy was water. For the last 2,000 years, water energy, steam energy, water turbines, whatever it was, generating electricity. But water was the primary method of gathering. That's why the star forts are in the water. Florida had the most spring water. Uh, and it's, it's 
it was one of the last states to it was actually the poorest and one of the last states to become a part of the union and mm -hmm. it was from a i forgot what his name but he shot himself he, he allegedly he committed suicide but then they they said that he died of a heart attack or something but i forget the guy's name i want to say it was distin but it was distin it was distin yeah. right where he bought the largest land purchase in the history of in ever the world in the world was in florida and that 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 purchase kept florida afloat literally like figuratively mm -hmm. and literally well he's allegedly he's the person that drained florida mm -hmm. he's the person that built all the canals yes. and the lock the lock systems um i don't think that's true i think i think the lock systems and the the canals we know the canals were here before not all of them but what they did was they might have just cleaned up some of these old canoe highways or they mm -hmm. call them canoe mm -hmm. canoe highways florida is littered with these canoe highways i find it interesting that henry flagler was one of the ones one of the people to be pushing the last frontier right mm -hmm. his he had three wives i believe in mm -hmm. his lifetime right. and he Burkness. was yeah he, yeah exact he was Harkness. a har he was a harkness and i related this to to because he was john d's right hand man uh, john best d friend. rockefeller yes and it was because of they his best friends yeah his business model was the one that helped standard oil become what it became mm -hmm. it was flagger was the mastermind actually behind it yeah and i related this to john d because harkness right that that name stood out to me harkness and not to talk shit about a lady with, I'm not talking shit, but uh, not to, I'm not talking, I'm not saying anything negative, but there's a lady, Deborah Harkness, Harkness, who she translated a lot of John D's work and she wrote a book on John D and she also wrote a, she's, right. uh, I believe an occult scholar and she has like this, this fictional vampire story or something like that's one of the best sellers. But the point being that when I was doing research on John D after reading like four or five biographies on him, Harkness stood out to me and I related back to my Florida information. Where I was like, Harkness, why does that sound so? And that was Flagler's stepbrother. It was a Harkness. Right. And also his, one of his previous wives was a Harkness. I was like, what's going on there? Yeah. And we have Harkness, yeah. right? They were behind the shadows, you know, darkness, Harkness, whatever. Yeah. You can relate that yeah. there. And I yeah, found they, that I found that really interesting. I go, so is there a connection? Because I have this 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 theory that I've talked about before, where you, you know we have the these ideas of the immortal alchemist. You have Elias Artista, where one of the things about alchemy, and he's like the Rosicrucian Antichrist or Messiah, whatever you want to call him. One of these ideas is that with alchemy, you're able to achieve longevity or eternal life or or whatever you know what i mean magical powers and i think that these guys that in history that have that are that are put preserved literally in stone like a, he a henry flagler or a john d rockefeller or a john d like the 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 magus that they are literally preserved in stone and they live in this uh, ethereal he's like they're like trump where they live in the minds of the liberals rent free he lives in it he's an egregore to them they can't get him off their fucking mind so they're constantly bringing him up and giving it energy and energy and they it just lives on forever that i think that's the immortal alchemist that's the eternal life not like the shit that we see in movies where it's a vampire or whatever it is you know what i mean so i have that idea where well well here let me if i, I think i can help ilu illuminate some of that um these Illuminati royal, confirmed. These uh, the royal families of the planet reincarnate within their own family. Yeah, <laughs> they reincarnate within their own family. Because what's the point of being rich and terrible if your kids might not be rich and terrible? You know what I mean. Um, everyone reincarnated into their family, and you said, "Well, we're all from planet Earth." You know, that's good. That's good. That's a good attitude. Have, but the reality is our ancestors matter our blood matters and that's where the tree the trees tie in the trees are our ancestral trees the giant trees were family trees this is where the family tree comes from 
families used to bury the ash of their, their loved ones into the trees. And ash has the 12, human ash has the 12 cell salts that compose life, you know, com- that comprise the, uh, Whoa, the, uh, dude. When, when, when the, when the egg is fertilized, it's going off of these 12 minerals. And when you're in the, in the womb, you're absorbing these 12 minerals, these 12 cell salts. You can look up cell salts, but the 12 cell salts correspond to the 12 signs of the Zodiac. They also correspond to, um, what was I just talking about? About the trees and putting the ashes okay. at the, at the so bottom of the tree. The cell salts go back into the tree, right? The tree absorbs them through the roots. They would bury their, their dead underneath the roots of the tree, kind of like how some people do today. The, the sap moisture of the tree would soak up those the ashes. It would, it would be buried in ashes. The ash would go up the tree, and this would literally be almost like a 5G tower that went up to the leaves, and the leaves caught the sun, and it was all a family ordeal. And you went back to that tree, and you could tap into your ancestors, whatever. But as long as that tree was planted, you would reincarnate into your family. When those trees get chopped down, you reincarnate at random. You might be Puerto Rican this life. You might be Chinese the next life. It's completely random. You will have no cultural identity. I'm a transsexual Portuguese hooker in my other life. I think that's what (laughs) what I heard one time. (laughs) So the family trees is what keeps us reincarnating at random. So they chop the, the trees down. And they might have been those big plateaus out out west, those Mm -hmm. giant ones. But they might have just been these, the also giant ones in Florida, the big bald cypress, the big redwoods, the the live oaks. The oak was the patron. So each each culture had its own tree. This this matters. This stuff matters so much. The South Americans, the Caribbean, especially the Puerto Rican, would have had the capoc, the capoc tree, and the capoc tree is giant. Flagler planted a kapok tree on his property i learned that from your videos bro or it was already there he's mocking it's like a trophy he's like i subjugated all these people i made it i didn't made it mine it's all mine now plant one of these bullshit trees to make fun of them or it was already there and he claimed it here's here's what i was getting at well one second we have we have edison planting the first banyan right um, Firestone brought over the first some of the first banyans. So all these robber barons, mm-hmm. as soon as they come down here, it's like tree, trees, trees. You know, give me the trees. They Edison and Ford had I think one thousand exotic species brought onto their their estate. They lived side by side. Edison, Thomas Edison, and Ford. Um, which fuck what was his name? There was Ford. one. What was the 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 old the first Ford? Henry Ford, the famous one. Henry Ford. Okay. Mm, yeah, uh, they were all butt buddies. Sorry. There's two, there's there's too many Henrys. So they they took a road trip together, a robber baron road trip, as I like to call it. And they went down to Florida, and they were obsessed with trees. The whole trip, it was Firestone, the guy that makes all the rubber, Edison, and Ford went on this road trip and they were going all throughout, they went all throughout the United States, but they really honed in on Florida because they, they say they were trying to find a rubber tree, Mm -hmm. Florida rubber tree where, so that they could build, you know, use rubber from America instead of having to cut down half the Amazon, but they were already cutting down, cutting down the Amazon. So that doesn't make sense. So what they did was they, they, I think they were grabbing these trees and they're like, the people can't have these, you know, we, we, we need to take these. Make like an crush. avatar. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. No, it's, I, it, some people think the tree stuff's ridiculous, but it's the family tree. This goes back to the Phoenicians. It goes back to the Finnish. If you watch my, my, uh, is that why bonsai video. trees are also like exquisite and, and, and exotic and they, they're they hundreds of years old. Does that, does that play a part into that as well? This is the first time I'm actually hearing about these family trees. So I don't know. I don't know where bonsai play, plays in, but we do have Murakami. There, we do have Japanese history down in Florida. The Murakami Museum 
there was like 50 Japanese I've been meaning to go fam- families I, I live pretty much right next to it I there all the time it's cool um, they had a Japanese colony there maybe that's old world we don't know you know the 1920s is when everyone showed up and started building houses before that it was literally uh, wood houses wood houses you, you got a little plot of no electricity no no streets unless you were in one of these major cities the seaport seaport cities everywhere else was literally the frontier like you said the last frontier was florida that's really where they had to do the sweeping out to make way for to make for make way for this last you ever heard of the ingram expedition no Oh, dude, I'm going to send you some stuff. I'm telling you, we have so much to talk about because this is, this is really, yeah. hey, this, I can, I can go forever. I can go. This is, I, don't, the, I can, this is good stuff. So what I wanted to say about Henry Flagler was that he was almost in a trance when he was pushing and figuratively penetrating the last frontier. Right. And he kept pushing and pushing. And he always said it was a vision that he had to see that final uh, railroad constructed the reason that he went across to the keys was because they wanted to find a deep port a deep sea port that they couldn't get on this other side so they couldn't cut through alligator alley right because of the ingram expedition i'm going to send you some stuff after the show uh the ingram expedition which is really interesting too which there's a conspiracy there but we can we can always do another episode on that but the reason that he he couldn't cut through because they literally said the one of the quotes was this is God's country because he can't give it to anybody else, right? This is God because he can't give it to anyone. You know, only God can live here. This is hell. This is hell on earth. All of these politicians always said that Florida was nothing. It was a waste of money. You can't do anything with it. There's not enough filter in the world to fill up the Everglades, right? So his next stop was the, the Keys. And he literally built a railroad over the water to the keys and connected them. Now it's funny that you have the Enochian keys and you have the Florida keys. And it's, it's weird that only in Florida is it named the keys nowhere else in the world. They name keys. It's only here in Florida, the keys. Well, what are they holding the key to? You know what I mean? What what are they holding the key to? So I, I, do you think due to the astrological alignment that there was something that was pulling henry flagler into finishing this thing because one of the things that really disturbed me when i was doing the research on florida and this is going to be endless research was that when they were allegedly mind you the the state was giving away land like skittles if you would finish one mile of railroad we would give you fifty thousand acres i forgot the the amount and these people were the largest land holders in the world because they were getting millions and millions of acres because they were getting credits from the government to finish these railroads so one of the things that really disturbed me was aside from the fact that they had killed the government had killed off the indigenous people they literally what it was a genocide 100 percent genocide Uh, one of the Mm -hmm. things that disturbed me was because the the Takesta people they were big on the bones of their of the dead they would give the bigger bones to the family members and they would bury the smaller bones and we know that skull and bones what's all that about you know what i mean they i I, they believe that they hold some sort of power by holding the bones of these people draw hence geronimo he was magical he had matt he was he was invincible could read morse code didn't even know it he he was a magician right he had uh, attained the illumination whatever you want to call it the Tecesta people also believed in giving bones to the the dead to the family and another thing that I found interesting was that they believe that man had three souls, one in the reflection, one in something or other, and uh, one in the eyes, and then one more. But I found I found that interesting. But well, we we do, we do have three souls. Yeah. Well, we whatever you want to subscribe to. Uh, my my point being with all this was that when they were building these railroads, they would come across these burial sites. And they would give away the bones to the workers as souvenirs of these indigenous people that were buried at these places. Like, hey, we have to plow right through here. Well, Jekyll Island, the Rockefeller Cottage, is built on a on a mound on a on, on top of 
not only a mound, it was a sacrifice. A sacrificial ground. altar. A sacrificial according altar. to so now you know that he he retired and, and lived in Florida, right? Rockefeller too. Yes. In or- Ormond Ormond Beach, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Um, at the at the time and the house is not very nice so this is one of the richest people on the on the planet and his house looks like shit and it really and it's called the casements right you know these people they were so um the robber barons they loved the grandeur and the and you know they try and say rockefeller was a philanthropist but Mm -hmm. he it's just so odd that he named his his uh his property, the casement. The casement. Yeah, I'm seeing that here. It's almost Four. like basement. It's almost like basement. It's almost like my my first impression is that the the structure above ground doesn't even matter. That the house probably didn't even matter to him. It had either something underneath it, another sacrificial mound. You know, he wanted one in in Georgia and Jekyll Island, and then he wanted one in Florida, maybe. But uh, I think it. He. I think these people were punished. If you want to be honest. If you want me to be honest, I think Flagler, Rockefeller, Ford, Edison, they, they did their industrialist scam, the Ponzi scheme. Everyone got, got hot on their tails. Oh, the robber barons, you know, people started revolting a little bit. And I think they just went on vacation. And that's literally what it was, was um, Edison and Ford, you know, that's a, that's a little bit after Rockefeller, but Edison and Ford also settled down in Florida. And it's just so weird their house also was not especially nice considering you had all this this grand stuff in St. Augustine you had all this stuff in Pensacola Jacksonville these you know glorious cities and then they just go out in the middle of nowhere and live in these little wooden cottages that are not really fitting to the lives that they lived and i think they were either punished or sort of tasked by, who? by their by their controllers by the by the uh the lizards. Fam. It's all right. You can say it. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily the lizards, because that's they're about they're they're a step above that probably. But uh, they they were like, we need to lay low, and they sent their henchmen because I think they were henchmen, Rockefeller, and they're rich. They got they got what they wanted a little bit, but they're just slaves of of higher ups. You know, too. Carnegie oh. died of depression. Oh really? Because he couldn't rule over the world he wanted to uh, install some utopia or something some mm-hmm. some racist so he, shit and he died because he, uh he couldn't get it done <laughs> that's funny so utopia that brings us that could bring us to another another topic uh the core the Khorashan people the Khorashan people what year are we this? in because be, because we've done a, a little bit of uh, everything we did the we did the origins of the bog people we did a little bit of the Timakua and the Takesta people, and that we did a little bit of John D. Ro- uh, Rockefeller, uh, Henry Flagler. What year are we in now with the Korshen? Okay, so let's let's go back. Let's not get confusing. We can go. We can keep going in that order. It's it's good though. I, I talk sideways, like I said. Um, the when the Europeans first came here, European quote unquote, whatever that means, because the Spanish. Keep in mind, okay, the Spanish that came here had just kicked the Moors out of Spain. Literally the same week Columbus left on his voyage, the, they had just kicked the Moors out of Spain in a military battle, and the Moors had retreated. So but up until before that time, all of Spain was controlled by the Moors. So they kick him out in 1492. Then Columbus sails over in 1492. And, okay, whatever. So the people that he bumped into when he got here, some of the, the not him, he, he was in Puerto Rico, but Juan Ponce de Leon came right after. The people they were bumping into, these Tamukua, these, these certain people, the way that they're depicted, they have, uh, they have male pattern balding. If you look up some of the engravings, if you search Debray engravings, D E B R Y engravings of Florida, I got Tim cool here. They're huge. Yeah, right? so you see some of them. Some of them have like the caps, but some of them you'll see this male pattern balding, almost like a monk. Mm-hmm. You know, 
that might have that was actually a hat and that this is sort of where sculpting sculpting culture comes from is some of these natives um had male pattern balding so they had a, a flat smooth top of their head and what you see with some of those hair ties uh they would have taken scalps that's where scalping comes from they'd scalp their enemies and put their enemies hair <laughs> on top of their bald spots like a toupee so a lot of these you know that's a modern interpretation of those little hats but they have that little you see how they're tied weird around the, the rim and then they're knotted up at the top mm -hmm. it's almost like a, it's almost like a hat you can plop right off but some of them you'll see where they, they have bald and the kids the children have the, the bald spot too have the bald male pattern balding but uh so those are the people you know the, the people in Puerto Rico wouldn't have been much different. I got people coming into the, trying to come into the store. <laughs> um, you want to get them? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. No, it's all good. Um, and these people were tattooed head to toe. Now, if you look, one of the first um, comparisons to the people that they found here, you ser search picked woman like a picked like picture but just picked woman florida and when the spanish got here they said these are picts they they likened them to the picts oh no p-i-c-t p-i-c-t hopefully we don't get any nudity bro <laughs> no here you got duck duck go here. yeah it's it's sometimes here, it's garbage me. bro yeah, it's not woman warrior. Search that picked woman warrior. So these are Irish people. These are people from Ireland. The picked, they're like Celts, and they were, you know, they had tattooed bodies. Well, we see the same. I thing got some happening. cosplay going on here. I'm not getting anything in full. Yeah, that's I, I can't help you. You just go on Google. <laughs> Hold on. You're on Google Chrome. Duck, duck, go. They're not going to find you. You're the true. Black you're, not, you're right, bro. The Blackhawks. Blackhawks not going to come tonight. There we go. Okay. So the, the picked women, you see that woman holding the spear? I do, yeah. I see something. Let's see. Whatever. So this these were Celtic here? people. They When they found the people living here, they compared them. This one? To, yes, that's that's her. They have other pictures with, with color showing the uh, tattoos, but they had blue tattoos pretty much. Now, they, the Spanish, who were mixed with the Moors, they had some darker hair. They saw Irish-looking people. They described them, some of them, as Irish-looking people. Then, like I said, we had some of the, the more Guatemalan-looking, like old Aztec, you know, like the, the tribes from Apocalypto, kind of that type of culture was also in Florida. So we had different cultures here in Florida. There was the death cults, the black drink death cults, but there was also, it was a seaport city, just like it is today. It was a, you know, a commerce, commerce center. People sailed in on their boats and traded the Maya, you know, all of it. There was black, there was white, there was Hispanic, there was Moorish, you know, Muslim, Arabic, Pacific. Some of the, the Seminoles, so if you start looking, look look at the Seminoles. If you just look up Seminole clothing or Seminole chiefs, these guys dress so strange. And what's interesting is the Seminoles are also mixed with Celtic, Celtic people. The, yeah, I found that really was, interesting that they that their their yeah, way because of because that's those are the Moors. Everyone, like you said, it's not a race thing. No one's trying to say what race is the you know the best. But the, these original the Moors had two races because remember Spain before the Moors came was all blonde hair, blue eyed, red haired Irish people. When the Moors came, we see the darker skin the darker groups coming in and they, they mix, but they didn't mix. They were culturally together, just like America. What, what color are they going to say? America is a thousand years from now. They won't know. 
they will have no idea. Some will say that they were all black people. Some will say it was all white people. It's going to be a mystery. So we had two cultures that lived side by side. They didn't mix until things got bad, until the Seminole Wars. You see the old Celtic, because the Celtic, the Irish, uh, the Celtic people were in Spain, right? And once the Moors went there, they either left or some of the Irish said, okay, we're, we're down with the Moors. We're down with Islam. We like this stuff. The, the barbers, they were both Berbers. You know, that's why the German people, that's why you have blonde bar- barbarians up north mm. in Europe. And then you have the barber, barber coast of North Africa. That's Barbary. The, the top, top rim of Africa was Barbary. And this is where the Phoenicians came from. And remember, the, so the Phoenician was like an Irish and an African uh, culture mixed together. And they didn't start, they lived together and they were, they were, you know, bonded. There was the same culture, different races, same culture, this Moorish culture. And what's interesting is the original, um, a lot of the plantations, like slavery, like, you, you know, you said, you know, Mind Unveiled, you've seen some of those videos. Slavery wasn't always what we think it was. We, we had a system at one point, you're going to roll your eyes, but we had a system at one point where on the boats, on these long voyages or whether they were working in the field, the black people would work, the darker skinned people would work during the day and the lighter skinned people would come out at night mm-hmm. and, work, and work at night. So we used, we took advantage of what we have, of what gifts we were given. The black people have the sun resistance. Yeah, I've heard about that before. The white people, this is something people don't know about. Uh, darker skin types don't get sunburned. They can get moonburnt. Wow. Moonburnt. Really? Moonburnt. Uh, it's because so, the people of the melanin, they, they, I, I forgot exactly. what they call them, the people of the sun or something like that. So exactly. They absorb sunlight. It's almost like photosynthesis. They absorb sun, sunlight. And they do way better in the heat. But then the Arctic people, the Arctic race, the where white people come from, they would work at night. They would do the indoor working, the indoor stuff, because they had no sun protection. Um, now, we can go into the origins of that, but this Moorish culture took advantage of that. So you might see a lot of black Moors. You might see a lot of white Moors, and everyone is arguing. The Moors were black. The Moors were white. I hate you. How dare you say they were white? How dare you say they were black? It's all a big supremacist thing when really they were working together. It wasn't until things got bad where we see slavery start picking up. We see, you know, the controllers, the resetters and the Seminoles. That's why you see Seminole. They're half descended from the the African Moors and half Scottish. I have a question. Osceola was Scottish. Yeah. Is this some sort of magical talisman or something? Because I think I saw one of your videos. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I'm, I don't have a 100% understanding of it, but it is because Napoleon. It's a garb. Is that what it's called? What's it called? It's called a, it's called a gorget. 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 G-O-R-G-E-T. And the gorget, those, uh, according to our history, those were gifted to the Seminoles by the American military and British and French militaries that they fought against as a sign of respect that they were so the seminoles believe it or not we could not defeat them they could not be defeated nope they they destroyed every <laughs> i mean we're told we t- were told they destroyed they destroyed every brick limestone structure from saint augustine down to miami practically in the three seminole wars so this and officially this was literally a group of a thousand people at most versus armies 30,000 man armies you know the uh, it was actually uh, who was it Jeff Jefferson and, and Jackson the, the the US army they fucked them up they were what yeah, exactly. what's what's it called uh, what was the name of the wars over by the was it 10,000 islands or something like that what's the name of that was that the Seminole right that's well kind of Yes. The Seminoles were, were hiding in the swamp. They were in the Everglades. Mm-hmm. They were in North Florida. And the last of them supposedly went down to the Keys. You know, Osceola and some of them got captured. Some of them 
um, but they never signed a peace treaty. They never signed an, an official treaty. They never officially surrendered. And we gave them all that land afterwards. It's almost like we made peace with them. We were like, no, no, like, no more, please. Like, here, have all this land down in Florida. Um, they had already been... What are you going to say? I have... So... We have the astrological alignment of Florida plays a big role. We know that I believe it was JP Morgan said that millionaires don't use astrology. Billionaires mm -hmm. do. If that's an actual real, real quote from him or not, who knows? But I a hundred percent believe that the elites, if they are lizard people or not, are in tune with the ley lines with uh, astrological meanings, all this stuff. Cause like you said, it's, it's in intertwined with everything. Now, one of the the interesting parts that I I that I find fascinating is the fact that they kept the name of all the names that the indigenous people had given to the places. They kept a lot of them. You have Okeechobee, mm -hmm. you have Osceola County, you have uh, Lake Toho Pelico. You know the whole thing because I I am under the belief that they understand that these names have sacred and magical meanings to the indigenous people therefore if they adopt it they will also inherit some of these magical mm -hmm. abilities or whatever it may be some sort of talisman 100 yeah. percent, i believe in that dude i think that you see it all the time you said they take these trees and they mock them open they're like oh i'm gonna put one of these right in the middle of my fucking house you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's yeah. a mock his house is his house is actually a star fort it's a four four-sided star white fort. white Fine. hall Whitehall. It's actually a star fort. It's made out of like solid limestone. So pyramids made out of limestone. Machu Picchu made out of limestone or gr granite. It's, it's the same thing. Limestone. And all these pyramids in Florida, they're called shell middens. The shell midden mm -hmm. is clumped up shells, right? Okay. Well, what they do is with, with the clumped up shell is they make a primitive cement. It's a very primitive, not primitive. It's better than our cement today. I mean, they would build these, they call it tabby, they call it Indian cement, they call it um, kakina. It's art, it's kakina mix. So kakina is like the rock, the limestone um, that's underneath Florida, this porous limestone that you can build pyramids out of. It's the same material as the pyramids, it's limestone. And they, the resetters, these, the robber barons, Flagler, uh, they came down here and, you know, yes, we have all the red brick stuff, but what's the most interesting stuff is the limestone, the limestone blocks, the, uh, you know, that's what Coral Castle was made out of. And the Kakina mix is what Flagler came down to St. Augustine. He took advantage of this, this Kakina mix. He made Ponce de Leon Hotel. He made, well, the, the guy that taught him the method made Villa Zoreda the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum is a castle. It's an old Moorish castle that's from the late 1800s. The one that's sunken into the ground? No, 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 no. So Ripley's Believe It or Not. Look up Ripley's Believe It or Not. Because we have one on International Drive, and it's like a fucking building that's like sunken into the ground. They have like some story of a sinkhole taking it up. It's probably not that one, yeah. obviously. But If you look up Ripley's Believe It or Not, St. Augustine, it's they put this museum, this goofy museum, in an old Moorish castle. It's a Moorish revival castle, but uh, it's so that's so this that one? is solid. That's solid stone, solid rock. No bricks, no no chunks. That is one solid cast of concrete, of, Whoa. of in, Indian concrete, Indian cement that for a fucking lasts. museum. That last well, it wasn't originally. It was originally like a mansion. They sold it. They bought it afterwards. But that is one pour of concrete. But it's not concrete today. And remember, what is li what is concrete? It's cement. It's it's lime. It's just dirt and lime. You can use anything. So lime is comes from crushed up shells. And the pyramids, the mounds all throughout Florida are crushed up shells. These were almost like their quarries. They would use crushed up shell and cast castles. That's where castle come from. The word castle is a cast. You don't you don't build a castle with rocks. You don't build up from the ground. You mm -hmm. cast it like cement. I'm trying to cast see it. the the white hall from an aerial view. I'm not seeing what you yeah, said. Yeah, it's, it's hard. 
It's got there a fucking go, yeah. pyramid here, bro. There he goes. Zoom in. Yeah, zoom in. I can't there zoom in anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, what what's why it's a star fort is number one, it's made out of limestone. Number two, it has a bastion in each corner. See the little ninja star corners? Those are bastions, the little corners that jut out. And he put a roof on it. Who knows what it looked like before that? And the banyan tree, right down where your mouse is, you go down. That's where the banyan tree is. That's it right there. That's the banyan tree, that big, big. Have you been there yet? I walk by there every day. I live in Palm Beach. That's right by where I live. Yeah, I haven't been here. I've been meaning to go. My my homie Romy is supposed to be coming down to work here in Florida here in a couple of months. And we're thinking about going around to different areas around St. Augustine, the Whitehall Mansion, the was a Dancing Elephant bookstore. So we're thinking about visiting a, a bunch of different places, maybe hit the Everglades up. Because there's a lot of interesting places. And again, it's right in our own backyard. And all this history or corruption of history, I guess you could call it, is right here, here in Florida. And Florida holds a a vital role when it comes into the foundation of everything, I guess. I mean, it plays a role into everything. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so remember you were saying, you know, it was it was nothing. Pretty much, like you said, everyone was saying, "Oh, don't so they down. say." There's nothing mm-hmm. there. That in uh, Florida was purchased 1821, I think. 1821, give or take, yeah. Okay, sounds so, about right. 1821. Within 10 years, Key West. Remember, Key West couldn't get there by train. Couldn't get there by car. Um, you could only get there by boat. In 1830. Key West was the richest city in America. Richest city in America. So they had the highest cap- per capita income. When you say, oh, well, there, there was no one living there. It was all the rich people vacationing. There was no vacationing. <laughs> there was no resorts. It was a mosquito-infested swamp. And these people allegedly got Literally. their money from, from shipwrecking, from finding treasure, we're told. What? And that's just, it's bullshit. And so we're told it had the highest GDP in the country in 1830. This is in this is the like the height of the industrial age. You there's no factories there. There's no nothing. They're making all this money. The Rockefellers, the Robin Barons, making all this money in New York, Chicago, with all this grandeur. And you mean to tell me that Key West had more money than all of them? So it was the richest city in America but it also had the highest population of any city in Florida. So that, that tells you it wasn't just a couple of rich people that were super rich. The whole dang, the mm-hmm. whole dang Island was filthy rich and it was the most populated city in Florida. So how is it the most populated city? If you could only get there by boat, St. Augustine, you could get there by, by train, by train. Know, or later, later on, but you could just drive to any of those places. Why was it that who was living there? Was it, it wasn't white. I don't think it was white people. I don't think. It was, oh, I see what you're getting. I don't at. think it was exactly. So where was all the money coming from? So if you look at New York in 1830, right? Key West in 1830 was houses like wood houses and just trees. There was nothing, barely any roads, literally nothing. Somehow the richest city in America, somehow, and that's only in nine years that happened. From 1821, there was not a single resident in the Florida Keys area. Not one. (laughs) Not one. Not one resident or residence in the Florida Keys. That's all the Keys. By 1830, it was the most populated city and the richest city in the world. Sorry, not the world. What am I saying? In in America. In in the States. In the States, right. And that's, that's why I tell people they... Again, it's almost like some sort of magic that these guys were doing. They were up to something. They were not, they were not up to anything good. Let's just say that. They were definitely so up to something. The main magic, you, you know, you keep bringing it back to the magic. Why does everyone want to come here? Like, yes, there was, there was things to take over. Yes, there was things to claim as their own. There was money to be made. But it's the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle tips off the coast of Palm Beach. Uh, pretty much Jupiter. Mm. 
Okay. Right off the, the southeast coast of Florida. That's the northern tip of the Bermuda Triangle. And the Bermuda Triangle goes down into the Caribbean. And Florida is the, pretty much the closest, you know, large inhabited landmass that's right next to it. That's where we get Florida man, the crazy, why there's so much <laughs> crazy shit in Florida. It's the same reason that the boats go missing and the, the trees, sorry, the uh, planes fall out of the air. It's something here is reactive. You know, there's there's a, a dense energy field, whatever it is. And if you're not equipped for that, it leads to mental illness, you know. Hence why all his wives went crazy. And one of his right. wives was doing seances and supposedly they had a psychomantium in, in so, the, so the here, Flagler College. Yeah. So let's talk about um, Edison, you know, Edison and Tesla. Edison mm -hmm. beat out Tesla, took credit for everything. He's not such a great guy. Fuck him. Fuck Edison. He, he's the head of the electric reset with the, you know, resetting and charging, charging everyone for everything. He's the one that wanted to push the slow, dirty. But who was he uh, funded by? Mm, JP Morgan, another lizard. So. Oh, yeah, right. Also, and West, Westinghouse. And too, Westinghouse uh, as well, yeah. Westinghouse helped helped Tesla out too. But um, so you have the father Which, of electricity. to add to that, Westinghouse also, if I, if I am remembering correctly, helped make the break, the engine break for the locomotive. So uh -huh. he would have so, helped right. Flagler and all these other guys, and he's directly tied to the founding of Florida as well. So you have again, you have all these lizards right. all together. It's, you know, what it's I mean? all the it's all the energy harvesters. It's Edison with the electricity, Ford with the gas engine, and remember, Ford put the the gas combustion engine in into practice in the late 1890s, early 1900s, and then you have. We have zero innovation since then. Zero. We still contain dirty gas explosions in a crude, loud motor. It's the same exact piston engine with no innovation. So we have been reset. That is the that is the new uh, model that they want everyone on. But we have Edison, the father of electricity. Ford, the father of the engine, the, the gas engine, the gas car. Rockefeller the uh, oil and a little bit of steel um, plant plant was most he had to do with the steam engine mm -hmm. he, he's the guy that got us off of clean steam and onto dirty steam and they they took advantage they took advantage of the clean steam at first with the steam navy uh, at that time uh, like in my Key West video it talks about the steam navy so the same navy the same fleet of warships they were state of the art, like steel ships, you know, metal. Everyone else had like these sail sails, you know, like old pirate ships, pretty much. They had these steam warships that were steam powered and could go leave America and go make it to Japan. Right. It took a little while, but um, the same fleet that went to Japan and knocked on the door and forced them out of isolation. Um, Commodore Perry, Matthew C. Perry. Uh, Commodore Perry led the voyage to Japan that forced them out of the old world, forced them into the new world regime. They got rid of the samurai. They got rid of the old emperors. Um, they got rid of the old culture, and they opened them up to the, the uh, globalism. The same guy, Matthew C. Perry, is the guy that pretty much founded Key West. He stuck a flag in Key West. It was already owned by someone else, but he stole it. He straight up stole it. So we have clear proof of the U.S. Navy stealing land from people. And that was only 1821 around there. And maybe a little before that. Isn't it ironic, right? Because you're talking about planting the flag. Well, we have Flagler and mm -hmm. Henry B. Plant planting the flag on both sides of Florida because you had Flagler on the East Coast and you had Plant on the West Coast. And, right. he, and they exactly. allegedly they met up in one of Plant's yachts or something like that. And they came to an agreement like, hey, we're not going to step on each other's toes. We can both make money from this. There was a, you take the East, I'll yeah, take the West. Yeah, you take yeah. the East, I'll take the West. And then mm -hmm. they both made it. And 
uh, plant was actually the, one of the first ones to have a water park here in Florida at the end of his railroad. And yeah. he always wanted to one up Flagler, right? It was always, he was, his hotels were bigger, more extravagant. Mm-hmm. Or did he find them? Like who the fuck knows? Because well, you can't the, trust it. The plant, the Tampa one, there's con- construction photos. But what we see is just such an unusual style of construction. Mm-hmm. You have, you know, you have the whole building and you have the, the spires sticking up, right? Instead of what they do today, they build a building level by level, you know, level by level, up, 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 and they get to the towers, right? Now, what with the, the Tampa, you can, if you look up Tampa University, look up Tampa University construction photos, please, um, that when they found it or when they founded it, when they started building, it was already half built on one side. It was built to the top up with a steeple with everything. It was already built. And I think they either finished it or that was just a bullshit photo. Um, I don't spend too much time trying to debunk, you know, construction photos, but that construction photo, you see the blank white sky. They, They call it the vanilla sky effect. And why would you build the tower up on one side of the building when you're still building, you still haven't even built anything on the other side. You still haven't built, you know, the first floor on the other side. Why are you building a seven story tower on the other side? I can't find the construction photos, but for people, is this, this is the one we're talking about at the Henry B plant museum in Tampa. There you go. Right underneath it, right underneath it. That one in the middle. This one? That, That Nope. Right up, right above it. Click on that. Oh, That's wow. That's construction photo. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, okay, so okay. You, so you see how it's, they completed the whole half. You don't do that when you build buildings. You, you build level up, right? You want the whole, you want the whole construction to be at the same level, at the same point, you know, in the construction. You don't, you don't have the tower already built on one side and then, then you're building the first story on the other side whatever so plant yeah he probably found that it's moorish as hell it has it has the crescent moons on top of it um I hear, I hear these people you. were obsessed with the moors obsessed if you look at um the ringling brothers we can get into the ringling oh brothers. yes this, this was happening right around the same time look up uh ka Dezan. it's just really hard to spell c-a-d-z-a-n Cardizan, Cardizan in Sarasota, made by the Ringling it? Brothers. C A space D space Z A. Cardizan in, in Sarasota, right? Mm-hmm. This was, I think, like nineteen twenty-five. Or Whoa! Something. Look at that shit. Look at the side of it. It's built oh. right up into the water, and that is the Ringling Brother, and that is. Venetian with a V, Venetian. Which yeah, I saw. I saw your ones. video on this one. I saw your video yeah. on this one. So you think that they were trying to tap into some sort of energetic field from the Bermuda Triangle? Is that what you're trying to get at? I mean, yeah, Florida's Florida's a ley line point, a big one. Um, you know, I don't act. I don't act well near the bottom one. What I think it's the 29th. I, I don't feel good down there. Oh, I don't feel good in Miami. I feel terrible. Right? If it's something, yeah. Right. Dude. Well, it's it's the five. It's the five G. It's the five. You think so, dude? <laughs> it is. I feel like a they, piece of shit when I'm down in South Florida, dude. It is. I feel terrible in Miami. I don't know about here. Like we have a five G tower right down the street. I feel okay here, but basically, they. Yes, it's the Bermuda Triangle. But it's also sorry, someone just came and someone's at the door again. Um, <laughs> it's okay. People come up and knock. We're not open yet. But a Thursday um, you will be August eleventh. I mean this episode will be Thursday, out after, yeah. but Thursday the eleventh. Dancing Elephant, Palm Beach County, Lake Worth, Florida. So that is caught is on. And he was German. The ringlings were German. It's Ringling. It's it's a German name, right? crazy why are they why are they obsessed with the venetians they so in in miami we have all these comparisons to venice the venetian pools the venetian causeway the venetian the canal 
It visa fucking visa floods in Miami exactly. like crazy too. <laughs> and then over, over there in Sarasota, here I'm going to blow your mind with something else too about Sarasota. But Sarasota um, has, what was I just going to say? So that that house is Venetian, which is very specific point in Italian culture. Um, Venice is a city in Italy, but Venetian as its own culture is very obscure. It's like next to Dalmatian, these la- this old language. And he just choose, chose this language for, for no reason and called his name Kade Zan, which is Venetian for House of Zan or House of John. John in Venetian was Zan. So it's the House of John, like Casa de Juan. It would be the Spanish translation. I speak a little Spanish. Juan on Juan, bro. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Spanish goes a long way. helps a lot, especially if, if you know English and one Romance language, one Latin language, you you can learn almost every language. And not learn every language, but you can find the phonetics yeah. in, every, in everything. I agree. I agree. So here, let's... One, one other thing. So we're in Sarasota right now. We have the Ringling Mansion. They're famous for the elephants. They, they brought the elephant into the circus. There was other circuses, but they had the first... Uh, circus elephants they were training them they were keeping them in florida and then they would travel from florida florida was their base they would travel around the country with these elephants where'd they get the elephants you know (laughs) in miami in miami we see in 1900 to 1920 27 maybe 1930 there are so many elephants in miami if you just look up miami elephant 1920 um they lived in resorts. They were there was just elephants all over the place. And then we also have the most elephant, ancient elephant bones in Florida, the mammoths and the mastodons, who are in the same family as the elephant, of course. Um, so the ringlings, right? The ringling brought they would they would parade them through the cities and stuff. Now that's like the fifties. Well, that's earlier. It says 1920 here. Yeah, so that's 20, but the one you were just showing. So that's Miami Beach right there, the guy golfing with using an elephant as a caddy. That's Miami Beach. That's Miami Beach. And that's the little Seminole. See how they got the little Seminoles to pretend to be Indians? <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? This, this right here? They get, yes, they would get like Seminoles to pretend to be like Indian servants. Oh wow! Okay, that's fascinating. Which is so funny because they they wear the turbans too. They Why? The What's the point of that? Well, they're they're an Arabic culture. The Seminoles. They're unlike any native, any any natives in America. They are directly descended from the Moors of North Africa. They might have been there. Might have been Moors in America already. I think there were, but we're going off of the Florida story, which is fourteen ninety two. Caribbean, you know, European history pretty much starts there. Um, There's all these elephants in Florida, and I think they were here already. I think the Ringling Circus was a way to get rid of them. And a lot of the mammoth bones uh, that we find today in Florida, number one, the Asian elephant is so different from the African element that their bones look like completely, completely different species. So if you were to see a mammoth today, you might even just call it an elephant because the ones down here in Florida were not hairy. They weren't hairy like like woolly mammoths. Yeah, that guy. It's a bone that they found <laughs> in a Florida river, a they, mammoth bone. You find them all the time. So un- unlike dinosaurs, which are fake, dinosaurs... You know, the, <laughs> oh, we, are they gay we too? Found, <sighs> we found this little fragment. We found a little Pleotheridon, uh fragment that's this big and then they con- then they construct a giant skeleton from this little fragment or little tooth that they find yeah dude and and whereas down here in florida you f- you can go swimming and bump into a mammoth bone you know they're they're all over the place everyone picks them up those guys i think were looking for for something i don't know if they're looking for bone but they're divers the people find them that aren't diving too Wow, so, and this goes against anything we've been taught in school about how these things came across the frozen tundras of right, right. No, it was Atlantic. It was all Atlantic. It was Atlantic travel. 
Atlantic sea travel. So, so Columbus, we were getting to, to Galloway for a second. Galloway, Ireland. Christopher Columbus was his, uh, his, the guy that, his guide. Christopher Columbus had a guide. They were Spaniards, right? There was a whole Spanish army, uh, Spanish military force that was going to the Americas. They had one Irishman with them. One Irishman, the guide, right? And he was from Galway. Galway is where the Finnegans are from. The Finnegans are the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians is where we get the Venetian, the Venetian families, the Venetian royal families, the black bloodlines, the black nobility of Venice, and the Jesuits and all that, all that stuff. Those are the bad Phoenicians that came afterwards, the bad ones that sold out. The Phoenicians weren't bad. <laughs> they were good. The Phoenicians were were good. They were they were a pagan empire that, that mm-hmm. practiced you know harmony they were into harmony and the sto- how the story goes is that the the uh, the others did black magic to take over right that's the whole thing mm-hmm. right so you look up sarasota florida crystal beach so the, the beach in sarasota is 99% quartz crystal and not crushed up shell you're saying, you're saying the, the sand? The sand of Sarasota Beach, Florida is 99% quartz crystal. Look it up. Th- this? Yep. The white sand. Is this the one that doesn't stick to you? Is that the one? Right, yeah. It's People like baby that. powder. And it makes noise when you walk on it. it yeah. Speaks. Yeah. It's very... Because it's quartz, it's it's resonant, you know. What? So so look up look up like the Wikipedia, like find you know find a source. Don't just take it from me. Ninety nine percent crystal sand. Sarasota. Siesta Key. Where, where is it at? Oh, wait, no. Yeah, I can't find it here. That's the first time I hear that, dude. You got Bird Let's Key, see, Siesta Key right maybe. here. So. So the quartz sand. Let me see if that pulls it up. Okay, the secret of Siesta Key sand. Search the secret of Siesta Key sand. Or siesta, if you just look up Siesta Beach, the Wikipedia on Siesta Beach has it. 99% quartz sand. I'm looking at it right now. So 99% quartz. And they say right that here. this quartz. I think I got it here. Rocks like sand. I don't know. What's the white of sand? No, if you go to the Wikipedia, it says it flat out 99 percent sand 99 percent quartz sand yeah right here sista key is 99 percent quartz mostly transparent white soft mineral what the fuck yeah and they say that this quartz comes from the Appalachicola river up in north florida and it comes from the appalachian mountains they say that this special sand gets brought down through the mountain rivers into the ocean what? and for some for some reason <laughs> siesta key Siesta Beach attracts this crystal sand and all the crystal sand concentrates right there and that's why you get the white beach the crystal beaches yeah and that's it would make sense so we're have we're, we have this gravitational pull of even people the i believe that <laughs> is is a coincidence in my friend Gabriel's Tarot Tories system, Florida also corresponds with the death card, which would make sense if people are gravitated towards Florida to retire, to die. You know what I mean? They, they come here to die, and you have this whole thing going on. All the elites came here to, to relax and eventually die, right? They had their little cottages yeah. and stuff like that. 
So this is crazy. This is the first time I'm hearing about this where this. Uh, the, oh. That's what the, what the fuck, dude? I don't even yeah. know what to say. So the so not only that the the water in Florida actually has a small amount of luminescence. It glows the 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 water the spring water I should say the spring water. Mm-hmm. Some of the beaches, some of the nice beaches, glow turquoise too. But the spring water, if you just look up Florida Springs, they all glow perfect, like bright turquoise, like neon neon blue. And that is because there's lime in the water. There's small amounts of lime, which is from shells, not not the not, not the fruit. Oh, the same. From shells, <laughs> lime, limestone, okay. like like limestone. Limestone means crushed up shells. So the lime in the water is what makes it blue. What makes the water glow blue for some reason? It reacts to sunlight and glows blue. This is one of my favorite springs here. I don't know if you've been here, Alexander Springs. I like going to the ones that aren't really that full of people because you know how they can get. Yeah. <clears throat> Kelly Kelly Park is my favorite one. I haven't been to that many. I've been to maybe five five different ones. I've been to Kelly Park. Yeah, Kelly when I was, Park is where... Go ahead. So Kelly, Kelly Park is where there's a, there's a painting of... of Juan, Juan Ponce de Leon, like finding the fountain of youth, right? And he goes up to this rock like cave where the spring water's oozing out of. And Kelly Park, Rock Spring, I think it's called Rock Spring, Kelly Park, is the exact location. And if you see the map, the picture where he comes out, the picture where he's going up to uh, the spring, if you search Juan Ponce de Leon, the fountain of youth you might you might find it he, he's going up to rock spring in kelly park and it, it looks the exact same today and that probably is the fountain of youth the whole the whole state is the fountain of youth kind of like you say the death cult like that's one side of it coming down here and there's that history of the this death painting cult. All... or this one oh right there right above to the right top right second from the right that one nope to the right to the right to the right that one. No. What? Sorry, maybe I'm lagged. That one. Yes. This one. The one where he has yeah the red the red skirt. Yeah. So that is now you look up Kelly Park, Florida. That's a small image, but you can see in the larger image, larger version, you can see the rocks up where the water's falling out of, and that's um, Kelly Park. If you look up Kelly Park. But it doesn't matter. The whole state is the fountain of youth. And part of it is, like you said, the death cult history. But it's also youth. The old people want to come down here to get younger. They're subconsciously coming to the fountain of youth. They don't even know it. They're being drawn there. The old people from all around the world, all around the country, getting drawn, pulled to the fountain of youth because their bodies are almost like screaming at them. You know, go heal yourself. Go heal yourself. Go swim in the water. But they never know. That no one knows about the springs. They just they just get to Florida and Disney. That's it. They just Disney and their energy is captured at Disney and forever in prison there by the demigod right. that yeah, is Mickey have, Mouse. They, <laughs> they have some some of the, some of the arches in Disney where the people walk under to come in through the gates. So, I've been studying this thing, and we could. How long, how long has it been, dude? It's been about almost okay, almost two hours. All right, I can go for a little bit longer. So. I have this thing that I've been looking into. I'm, I, I like studying Pythagoras, obviously, because of Senpai Hall. And I came across this, this book from the 1970s. And this idea called Pythagorean Palaces. I don't know if you've heard about this before. But the idea that if you follow the Pythagorean principles, they are able to encapsulate within an actual building another dimension of higher Mm -hmm. state of consciousness within that dome. So that relates to the whole Tartarian thing, how they take over these buildings because they are, uh, you know, architectural, uh, the resonance architecture where, you know, cymatics and all these things. And it's been proven that people's experiences within cathedrals are different 
their their visuals are different the way that they hear things are different that's why they have stained glass windows at these places they Mm -hmm. they literally manipulate reality real time in these buildings now you t- you mentioned Disney and the archways, right? We have archway Freemasonry. You have the the two pillars. You have all this stuff. Well, the reason that when you walk through a door and you were looking for something, and you all of a sudden need to forget, that's part of that experience. The reason it's made that way is because you're literally going into another, again, dimension, state of being, state of consciousness, whatever it may be. But it's meant. To do that, it's meant to change you in, a, in some sort of way. And you mentioned <laughs> when you go through the archways at Disney, they're probably staying with some piece of your soul somewhere, and they're harvesting not, that shit. Not, not to mention all the. I don't think you can say this on YouTube, but the the ped. Oh uh, yeah, all the the p words. The peta stools. It's, like, <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like they only hire. Oh yeah, p, p words like. They get caught well, like once a week almost. Mm-hmm. With one of well, one of their employees getting caught in some sting operation, or so yeah. it's, it's it's top to bottom. You know, it's the top. They 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 hire certain types. As too. above, not to, so not below. To put down the, I'm sure that I'm sure there's good <laughs> good people over at Disney that aren't. No, they're all lizards. They're all fucking shape shifting lizards. Right. So there are there are some bunkers. There are some interesting mm-hmm. bunkers and, and tunnels underneath Disneyland. Oh, a whole you know, complex Orlando. of tunnels. There's there's entire uh, tunnel systems. Yeah. Here's another thing. Here before we, bef- uh, I'll give you a little sneak peek on my next next video is Tampa Bay uncovered. Now I'll show you this, but you have to promise not to do it a video. Promise not to do a video on it first. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> um, the tunnels of Tampa. Search up ton- Tampa what Bay. What the fuck? Tampa Bay tunnels. They have one of the most extensive tunnel networks in the United States, in Tampa Bay. And Sarasota's right. If Sarasota is Tampa Bay, pretty much. That's another funny thing. You have Tampa Bay. Well, St. Petersburg, Tampa, Sarasota, Bradenton. The Ybor tunnels, you mean? You, well, those are some of them. Ybor is a was a neighborhood of Tampa. Some of them are in Ybor, but Tampa tunnels. You might have to go on Google again, but there, there's a shit ton of stuff. Bro, it's why crazy. are you on Google, dog? Because who cares? They're gonna come if they're gonna come. <laughs> they're gonna, they can see everything you do. Yeah. Duck, 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 go isn't gonna be the thing saving you from, <laughs> from. <laughs> so which one? Historians not agree. How'd All you, of them. How'd you mention? It's crazy. All of them. Just temp Tampa Bay tunnels. Look Ebor, at, look you at said images. Well, Ebor is some of them, but they're all throughout Tampa. Tampa Bay tunnels, that's all Tampa. And some of them went for like 200 meters and then they stopped. They, they couldn't go farther. They, they didn't want to go any farther. They, Ebor they City's infamous mapped. tunnels? They haven't even mapped all of them yet. It's crazy. And they're all brick. They're like perfect brick masonry, which is hilarious. So where do they say that these came from? They say they don't even know. Number one, they didn't. No one knew they were there. Number two, wow, there's mysterious no, there's tunnels. No record of them. Number the... three, they connect all the buildings underneath <laughs> underneath yes. the city. Have been used for smuggling Chinese Cuban right. prostitutes during prohibition. Right. Well, yeah, that's what they say is prohibition. That's what they blame it on is prohibition. Like, oh, these 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 alcoholics had so much money to build all these tunnels right underneath everyone's feet without anyone noticing they built these brick tunnels. Yeah, okay. There's no way. Wow, dude. That's what so I'm that's saying. All... There's so much to dig out here at Florida. You're you're introducing me to new things here in Florida I had no idea about. So those there's like I have five separate uh, locations on my video. Of tunnels, I don't know how many total there are, but I have five separate tunnel networks that are going to be in my video that are in different points. Some in Ebor, some are in Tampa Bay, some are, you know, closer to St. Petersburg. But that Tampa Bay area was very significant, a very significant seaport 
to these people. Mm -hmm. And by these people, you mean the lizards, right? (laughs) Have you come across any lizard stuff when doing your research, bro? Okay, so let me give you my take on the lizards. Um, I don't believe in aliens. Aliens are fake. Anunnaki's fake. It's all fake. There's no such thing as aliens. There's no, there's no space really. So there's nothing that can live up there. Now, interdimensional, maybe that makes a lot more sense because in order to, to come from a different star system, which is you know millions of light years away, you would have to be interdimensional in order to make those those jumps in time. But that this is all sci-fi bullshit. There was no such thing as alien, no such anything until sci-fi writing came at the end of the industrial age. Nineteen twenties, right? Right. Even a little bit before that, but that's when it really caught on. Like they did the War of the Worlds. They read the War of the Worlds over the over the radio and people thought it was real. Yeah, science fiction is what they called it at first, because HP Lovecraft so science, was on this shit. Exactly. Um so this the science fiction came first, then the UFOs. There was no UFO alien. Well, first off, UFO doesn't mean alien. Here's what I have to say. Any place you take the word alien in history, this this will solve so many things. Any place you t- you see the word alien, like ancient alien, they'll they'll put that all over history channel. Oh, look at the aliens. Here's the aliens. Oh, yeah. Pentagon aliens. Congress. Oh, aliens. They'll show you that, right? What what do they hide? What are they so afraid of people knowing? They want people to be on the aliens. That's probably going to be the next COVID is the aliens, but um, the fake aliens. Any place you see alien in history, you can replace it with the word Aryan. Aryan. These are ancient Aryans. It's kind of racist when you do that, though. <laughs> it's not. No, see, that's the thing. See, there you go. No offense, but that is the brainwashing. Mm-hmm. That is the that is the brainwashing. Japanese is Aryan. Uh, Iran is Aryan. Iran actually is the Persian word for Aryan. So how are we going to say you're what? Persian people are Nazis? No. Well, they've demonized, they're, they're, demonized it on purpose. That's why that's they, what they World War II exactly. was about. They were going after and the, the swastika. <laughs> The swastika was Native American. It was Indian. It was so the Aryan people are what came before, or before the Tartarians. These late Tartarians, the brick structures. Before the brick structures, we have the megaliths. Right? We don't have any megaliths in Florida. I think that's interesting to note. There's no megaliths in Florida. There is the. Uh, so here, look look this up real quick, please. Bimini Road. Do you know about the Bimini Road? So the Bimini Road... The one off the blocks. coast? The Bahamas? Off the coast of Florida. It's these blocks that are bigger than the blocks at Machu Picchu. Some of the biggest blocks like known to man. Stone blocks down on the ground. Not that. It's not that. That's just like cinder block. The, that right there. That. That's the Bimini Road between Florida and and the Bahamas. And those are megalithic stones. And those are off the coast of Florida. In fact, did you know that the entire intercoastal of Florida is artificial? Intercoastal, so the the part the whole barrier the barrier island. It's it's a it's a construction basically. Really? It yeah, it's built up. It's not even even in our official history, they tell us that it was just patches of islands, and then they connected it all with a road and made it. So. If if they were able to make the rainforest a botanical garden, I wouldn't put it past them that they were able to geoengineer this barrier outside the coast of Florida. That's one of the things that blew my mind on an episode I did with Jared, where so, it was fucking crazy to think about that. So you asked about the reptilians that we always are given. We're always given these subjects with a sci-fi science materialist um, lens to look through, right? We don't have the vocabulary. We're not equipped to look at it 
for what it is because we've been given the false history with the science fiction and the space, the fake space and the fake, the fake rockets and the, the moon. Oh yeah, we landed on the moon. There's no way. So what it is, is it's all getting people to look up there. Oh, look, look for the aliens. Oh yeah, they're out there. Oh, infinite space. They don't want people looking down, looking straight at what we can touch. So the Anunnaki, what are the Anunnaki? They're Aryans. They're the original, they're the Aryans, this original Aryan tribe that came out of Atlantis and gave. That's why in Japan, we have the Ainu, the Ainu in Japan are the Anunnaki. They are the people that are, that are different from the rest of the Asian, that are the Japanese nobility, that were the old Japanese you know, royal families. And those are the Ainu. And we see also Ainu and Ainu peoples using that, that, uh, that word all around the world. So, um, and actually the, the An, you, this is a stretch, but the An at the end of Japan is Japan Anunnaki, Japan, <laughs> J- Japanu. It's the, the An. That's the first time I hear that one. Definitely. So here, you, you asked, about, I'm trying to tie this all back into the reptilians. You asked about the reptilians. So you have, what are the three main, three main alien species that, that we're told about? And I, I used to know everything about aliens. I was hook, line, and sinker, dead into aliens. And you progress out of that because you realize it's a materialized form. It's condensed. They want us, they want us understanding these higher topics in a science fiction lens, in the lens that they gave us. They say, okay, here, yeah, look at history, but look at it through our lens. And that's the science fiction lens where everything is industrial. Any type of, any type of uh, phenomena in the sky must be a, a vehicle or it must be a engine it must be a you know advanced technology and there is advanced technology but what we're looking at is ain't everything ancient alien um back to the okay the alien races we have three races that they really really push on us number one is the blonde the the vegan the pleiadian the the Lyran, the Lyrans, the Pleiadians, and these are the blonde Ashtar Galactica man shit. <laughs> these, yeah, these are the Pleiadians. These are the, like the good guys. They, in almost every story, they're the good guys, and that's not a racial thing. It's not a, because they're the white aliens. But then there's the other, the reptilians, mm-hmm. and the reptilians are the bad Aryans. So the Aryan, Aryan was not a race. It was not a race. It was a caste. It was a title. So the Aryan was the nobility. They were the they were the priests, like the Druids. They were the good Druids, the good natural leaders, the medicine men, stuff like that. So the Aryans, and you have the word Aryan in Tartarian. In in every language in the world, most of them R and L are interchangeable in in many many cases between languages. So you go to Japan. You go to Asia and ask them to say fried rice. They say flied lice because the R and the L are switched. Really? Yes. Fly. Yes. R. R is L in many, many languages. Um, So what they did was they did that to alien. They took the word Aryan. And remember, the Nazis were happening and they're like, oh, the Nazis are too. They're too into the Aryan stuff. They wanted us off the the ancient wisdom and i'm not saying the nazis were good at all i'm saying they were tapped into the, the tartarian and they they want they were like hey what is this stuff we want to know about this stuff and the rest the the british the french they were like no 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 keep that down you know so they swapped the aryan with the alien right around 1920 to 1940 is where they got rid of the word Aryan and they started using the word Indo-European. So Indo-European, what does that mean? From India to Ireland, <laughs> all across. That is that is Tartaria, as far as I'm concerned. You're telling me there was one group of people that spanned India to Ireland? And Ireland is the same root as Iran. Iran. And... Um, 
India is the same root as Andes, the Andes Mountains. It's phonetics. You can swap the vowels. Um, the Indian, the Andean culture is the Indian culture. They're very, very similar. But so you had the good Aryans, and this wasn't a race thing, like I said, you know. You had the good Aryans, who are like the Pleiadians. That's how they're depicted in, in the alien culture. Then you have the reptilians. Now, the reptilians, there might be there might be lizards out there. Hey, who am I to say? I haven't seen one yet. There's definitely dark stuff. But what it is, is it's, it's a metaphor. It's a shapeshifter. It's a people that show you one thing, but act another way. They're shapeshifters. They're, they, they, um... They used the occult knowledge for themselves. And they, they, they kept it and they said, we're not sharing this with anyone. They kept, so the Aryan tribes were the nobility at the top of these, at the top of these different races. Like I said, that's why you had the caste system in Japan. You had a caste system in, in India. You had a caste mm -hmm. system in Iran. And today, the, the Iranian people today, tell you we are Aryan and in World War II like I said I'm not going pro pro this pro that just what it is in World War II you had the Germans siding with who who did they side with Japan Persia Iran okay Japan Persia and India and Ireland they tried to get India to switch sides because India was owned by the british during world war ii the germans sent spies into india and the indians loved the germans because they connected they, they were from the same culture and they said come join us you know we'll help you revolt against the british but they wouldn't do it the, the control was too strong and they wasn't until you know uh 20 years later that they got independence uh the japanese where why are the japanese siding with the germans in world war ii where does that come from you know it's because they were some of the last people to be tuned into this ancestral you know tradition that the globalists wanted to get rid of and they got fucked up for it too yeah they got <laughs> they got fucked up and we dropped a bomb we've dropped a fake nuke on them they've been playing with hello kitty toys ever since yeah um, yeah that's that's really fascinating and it would make sense right it would be america are, would be the Aryans are the are the phoenicians for for lack of a better word um they were largely blue-eyed not not completely but these people came to america too they had a control control not control not control in the sense that we think but they had a hierarchy a caste system mm -hmm. and these people went back and forth between Ireland, Africa, North Africa. You had the Phoenician. All you have to do is look up the Phoenician Empire. The Phoenician are the Vikings. It's So you know how they took, like Anatoly Fomenko, they took one half of history and then they sandwiched it on top mm -hmm. of another half of history and they added a thousand years. Well, in the late 18, 1800s, you get almost an exact replica of a thousand years earlier where the punic the punic wars in north africa you had this naval fight between the romans the and the carthaginians the carthaginians are phoenicians they're the phoenicians who are stuck in north africa because they they were kind of kicked out of everywhere else and that's how these like irish people ended up in north africa ended up in the south of spain and Oh, this ties back. I forgot to tie in um, the Columbus. Columbus was brought to America by an Irishman, by a, fin a Finnegan. Mm -hmm. his, his name was, uh, God, what was his name? I forget his name. But if you look up Christopher Columbus, Irish navigator, you don't have to look it up, but his navigator was an Irishman. Columbus had an Irish navigator, and he was from Galloway, which is the royal families, where the royal families of ireland lived and they are the finnegans who are descended they're the it's like you know you go to the mediterranean and they say venetian with a v you go to north africa and they spell it with a ph guillermo harris i think is his name is yeah william harris william harris yeah 
His name was William Harris. But they get see you see how they give him a Spanish name, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh yeah, the Spaniards went went to went to America." He was an Irishman, and he was the only person that knew how to cross the Atlantic and find find this landmass because he knew about it. This is official history. He had been to America. They don't talk about that. This guy literally told him he knew of a landmass, so Columbus knew what he was what he was going into. And think about it. They used an Irishman to find, because the Irish are descended from the Phoenicians as well. That's why the Irish are so hated by the English. The English is this this old, or the new royal families, the Germanic bloodlines, the um, the dark, the incest, the bloodlines that sacrifice and do the, the dark bad stuff. Okay, I'm jumping all over the place, but back in, <laughs> in ancient Aryan history, you had this schism, this shift where you had these, you know, Tartarian Aryan traditions all over the world that were pretty much in harmony. They weren't, it wasn't a one culture because that's like New World Order. You don't want one culture. You want a lot of independent cultures that coexist. And that's what you had in this old Aryan system. That's why you can't say the word Aryan today. It's one of the only words that you can get criminally punished for using. Yeah. Um, and they changed it. They changed English as an Aryan language. Persian is an Aryan language. So all these languages were recategorized as Indo-European. If you know your phonetics, which comes from Phoenician, phonetics, phonetics is Phoenician, right? Um, definition, the word definition, def, Phoenician. If you know the definition of something, you know the spelling of it, right? The spelling. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So back in Babylon is where you had these Aryan outposts around the world, Tartarian, whatever you want to call them, old world. In Babylon, this is after the, the last ice age. Only the Aryans had all the knowledge after the higher knowledge after the Ice Age. And all the other tribes, the Aryan tribes, the Atlantean tribes, they went to different points around the world. One tribe went to South America, one tribe went to, and they retaught everything. They retaught agriculture, they retaught written language, and they enriched and benefited the cultures that they went to. In Babylon, This is where you get Babylon. Everyone says, oh, Babylon, you know, it's it's such a bad word. In Babylon, which is like Iraq and Iran, you have the Aryans, they flipped the script. And this is where the bad Aryans come from, the bad aliens. And this is where the the Khazars come from, Mm -hmm. the Khazarians. The Khazars come from this area, um, Babylon. And the Babylonians said they they got to where they were supposed to be after they got to, they took their ships, you know, like I said, they all spread out. But this one tribe um, came to Babylon and the people were so like savages, like they, they, it was right after the last ice age, whatever reset this was, I'm, I'm not trying to say I know, but it was the flood or the ice age. The people had to start from scratch, basically. But the Aryans preserved the knowledge and then brought it back to all the kingdoms around the world. But in Babylon, they got they got there. They got to Mesopotamia, and they say, "Oh, no one knows anything. No one knows how to make food. No one knows how to write. No one knows how to do math." Hmm. What if we just sort of keep this for ourselves and only give them enough? to where they'll they'll know how good it is and need us and and we'll use them so this was almost like the invention of lying like (laughs) things things were so good that people didn't even it was almost like the first bad decision and these bad aliens created black magic and they created it in babylon and mesopotamia Mm -hmm. so that's why that's why in our system in the modern official timeline civilization comes from iraq comes from mesopotamia the euphrates 
Well, this is where the Anunnaki is. And remember, the Anunnaki are just the Aryans. Because remember, in Japan, they were called the Ainu, the Anu. So it's the same word, Anunnaki, Anu in Japan. They're the different people that are different. The fish-headed gods, right? Anu? Right. They Well, they wore uh, headdresses and stuff in, in imitation of their gods. So when they showed up to the New World, they got called gods. They got called... And these people say they the Aryans worshipped the stars, mm-hmm. but in our modern history, where, where it's all convoluted and confused, they tell us the the aliens, the Aryans, um, they came from the stars. It's not coming from the stars; it's worshiping their stars. Their knowledge comes from the stars. Their understanding comes from the stars. They didn't come from the stars. That's sci-fi bullshit. That is complete made up by some white guy getting paid a million dollars to go make a sci-fi fake sci-fi history of the world yeah dude <clears throat> so the, you know so obviously the powers that be are manipulating history real time sometimes they're changing definitions of words it's just like 1984 where they have a department of is it the department of truth or something like that. And they have, they literally have one nowadays. So there is so much more to this dude. And I want to have you back on. I don't know what your schedule is when it comes to, let me me finish this. I got one more, one more thing. Let me wrap up the, um, the Anunnaki thing. The Anunnaki is where the reptilians come from. And I want to help people with this because people get so caught up on the alien thing. It's the Anunnaki come from Mesopotamia with the Sumeria, right? The Sumerian gods that look like reptilians. They're not reptilians. In Babylon, we have the first, they, they used their knowledge of the stars for bad, basically the black magic. They took it all mm-hmm. for themselves and they, and they said, no, you get, you get the fake religion. You get the one God in the sky stuff that doesn't give you anything. You just feel guilty all the time. Meanwhile, they're using the magic. They're using the... So these are the the reptilians. These are the reptilians, the bad Aryans, the bad aliens that went against the system and and created the corporation, the dead dead business system, the maritime law. You're just a dead sailor. You know, you've heard about that, you know, the the sovereignty stuff, birth certificate. But yeah, we can get into that another time but i hope that i hope that helps people who are stuck on the the whole anunnaki reptilian thing yeah because you make a good point right everybody's stuck on the literal 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 and they forget about the significance you know they forget to read behind the lines but it's been because of the conditioning of society that makes us think one dimensional instead of looking back and looking at it from a three-dimensional point of view where you could this is the first time i'm really hearing about this point of view when it comes to the alien reptilian because i always kid around with people but i know yeah. that would mean that they actually are people who are rept- metaphorically reptilian right the archon well, they are the, the evil forces at work yes they they call down the archons and they're if you were to look at their aura like a human being's aura a natural aura is like a gold beautiful star it's centered in the heart chakra and it's it's like radiates outward in a sphere right I, i'm not i don't see auras all day but but i know what auras you know it's the energy field it's not mm-hmm. the aura it's the energy field of the human body so the reptilian things come from when you look at the energy field of some of these people like like old rockefeller rockefeller looks like a synthetic human yeah because the the Automata. soul is the soul is gone <laughs> The soul has left the body and you just get like skin, you know, you just have like a, a that's, that's what Rockefeller look, looks like. Yeah. It looks like yeah. he has like no, no, no features on his face and they, they worship, they, they call down the black entities into themselves, into their families and they lose the soul. They lose their, and if you could look at their, their aura through like a, or a scope or whatever you would see one of those reptilians you would see one of those lizard entities that's just starving for energy for other people's energy 
and they do have that. So it is an interdimensional thing. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not that they go back and forth between dimensions. There's no such thing as dimensions. People, Einstein is a fucking fraud that came up with all that bullshit. <laughs> um, so they they came up with all that interdimensional stuff. There's no. There's no other place. This is it. That's another thing that people need to realize. This is it. This is the world. This is the center of the world. We're living in the center of creation. We're living in the Garden of Eden. We're living... This is the only place. There's nowhere to run to. There's no planet that, that Elon Musk is going to take us to. There's stuff underneath, for sure, but that ends also. So mm -hmm. this is this is the, the playing field. This is the theater. And the word Earth is in the word theater. And when you look at the planet Earth, it's blue and it's green, right? Well, blue and green are the throat and the heart chakra. The heart chakra is the green, the green chakra. And the word heart is in earth. Mm -hmm. So we live in middle earth and the heart chakra is the middle, the middle chakra. It is the middle earth. So when you, when you live, when you exactly, when you live on earth, that's like the main thing that you should strive towards is opening the heart chakra you know people always blah 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 people get all new agey but it's true and the people that deny that and deny that type of energy and that that uh transfer of good energy are the people that are obsessed with underworld they want to get under the earth they want to go up above the earth you know what i mean it's always away from the earth because if you're a negative entity earth is like a prison and they always want to get off it, go up to space, go down to go. They want to drill down as deep as they can. They always want to get away from Earth. Yeah, like Elon Musk. Because, <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. He's he's drilling down there. He's up there too. So but, uh, I should I should probably get going too soon. Yeah, yeah. We'll wrap it up here because again, there's a lot we can talk about. We'll chat again about your schedule. See what's going to be like after you open. You want to plug your social media for the people once more so they can find you for those that stuck around this long. Um, old world florida on youtube and then old underscore world underscore florida on instagram awesome and that's it and hey. we're at, and i'm 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 speaking from the dancing elephant down in lake worth florida the dancing elephant best metaphysical store in all of florida soon the world um yeah, that's it. And soon the universe. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, dude, I yes. appreciate you coming on, bro, and, and talking to me. This is really fascinating. Thanks, I had a lot of fun. Thanks, thanks, Juan. Yeah, me too. My, my first podcast. So, thank you. Yeah, I got to pop the podcast cherry, and we got to do it again, yeah. bro, because there's a lot more we can talk about when it comes to this sort of thing. So, hopefully, we can find some time to. Yeah, for sure. I'm podcast. More than, happy, more than happy to come back on. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Thanks, Juan. Peace. Thank you.